All right, apologies for that, everyone. But we looks like we've got all of the audio issues fixed, and we are going to be throwing it back to Xenos Saga Episode One with Miss Scarlet Tanager. Take it away. All right, y'all can hear me. <laughs> I am present and accounted for. Um, so I guess we might as well start from the top. Hello, my name is Miss Scarlet Tanager. I am more well known for playing horror games, uh, but this happens to be one of the very few RPGs that I run. So my couch is um, headed by the lovely bunnies, of which you can see two of them. There's the other one. This one is Garrus. This one is Tally. Remember their names. There will be a test later. And I am also joined by... Hi, I'm Blue Metal, and I love Xenosaga. There we go. Okay, let's get right back into this. All right. All right, we're going to go straight into new game in three, two, one, go. Okay. All right, I'm immediately going to start with skipping some cutscenes. you want to explain the story while I get through the tutorial fight, Blue? So the story is very long, convoluted, complicated, lots of stuff we could go over that would take up the entire run to really explain. But right here at the start, really, it's just uh, we're more or less inside of Cosmos's brain, trying to teach her how to, like, handle combat situations and stuff. See, there she is right there, the blue hair, Cosmos. She's probably uh, very well known. You've probably seen her before. And uh, before we get into, like, the environment simulation, we're going to be doing a uh, combat simulation. This is going to be the tutorial. And... This is pretty much just going to be, you know, getting used to combat. And the way combat works in this game is uh, you're going to see underneath the uh, HP and EP, there's going to be these uh, four arrow looking things. <clears throat> Excuse me. And there's going to be like two blank ones. So the way combat works is uh, you need at least two of the arrows to use an attack. And if you have four, you can use two attacks. And if you say guard or something, like every turn gives you four and you can hold a max of six. So what you would do is uh, use one attack and then end it there or guard or something. And on your following turn, you'd have six. And you can use three attacks where your third attack can be a more devastating move called a tech attack. But we're going to do something like right off the bat that's going to pretty much invalidate the need for that third turn. So, time for Glitch Explanation 2, Electric Boogaloo, since we missed the first one. I'm going to let you do it while I get the glitch, because I have to take one of my earbuds out to hear the console. Yeah, yeah. So, the glitch is why any percent exists, because at first we were running any percent glitchless, and then an interesting glitch was uh, discovered and heavily used by Japanese runners before finally being uh, discovered by us Westerners. So, what happens is... You open your menu and you take the disc out and this kind of scrambles the upgrade costs and stuff like that just numbers and values see there's a disc right there <laughs> so you normally you have like some weird values for your upgrades here but if you put another game disc inside the console of the same region all the values turn to zeros so you kind of get where we're going with this right it means all of your upgrades are free so you can see she's upgrading the tech level of her tech attack to max of, I believe it's 50. 50 and then yeah. we'll be uh, upgrading the speed from low to high and the weight from A2 to A0. So the tech level is more or less oh, the funny. damage output and the speed from low to high pretty much lets you set the uh, tech attack to your second turn attack. Because remember how I mentioned you can go from two turns to three turns if you wait? But when you set it to a high slot, your tech attack gets adapted to that second turn. So you can just go right immediately into a fight, just go like boom, boom, tech attack, and you just murder things. And the weight stat pretty much just... Um, the, the, the better your weight stat is, the less of a speed impact the tech attack has upon use. So you take the disc out after opening your menus, put another game in of the same region, and everything's zeros. <laughs> It's pretty and cool. then right here on this screen, I'm going to put Xenosaga back in. Um, because if I was to go any further than this, the game would hang and I would have to restart. And we don't want that because that's slow. Um, the reason of that is because in the character screen specifically, hold on, I'm listening for the disc. There it goes. Um, it looks like it's freezing. It's not frozen. Don't worry about it. Hey, look, she owns an A pose. 
Um, the reason is the game is looking for the models on the disc, but if you don't have Xenosaga in the console, it gets stuck in an infinite loop trying to load models that aren't there. Uh, which is why you have to put Xenosaga back in on that specific screen. Um, hold on, there's nothing for Cosmos. Okay. And we can actually play now. Um, but for some reason, it doesn't load the actual position that they're supposed to be in, like the animation. Um, so they just get to A pose forever. Yeah, they normally right. have this like a cool looking nice. pose, but <clears throat> when you yeah. do this huh. glitch, they're just A posing. And these enemies can sometimes be trolls. So this is one of those RPGs where the enemies are on the map and you can dodge them instead of being a random encounter. And it looks like you made it through that one, no problem. Let's see if I can get the second one. A lot of enemies have some really RNG movement. Why would you stop? Rude. Oh, see if you're oh, doing yeah. you're him stopping with the knives. <laughs> yeah. Oh, come on. It's fine, you I was stopped. far enough ahead. So normally I would do the bug in this room just um, so I don't, if I can reset if I hit an enemy. Um, but for safety reason, I did it early, just in case. And I did not forget to equip the tech attacks this time, so you get to nice. actually see the skip. So this is like the one actual skip. Um, this is the eggs tutorial fight. So the game is going to force me to put Shion into an eggs unit, which is bad. It's good if you're playing glitchless, it's bad if you're playing any percent, because the eggs are actually weaker. Um, but because I did that glitch, I'm going to one-shot the boss and skip the other half of the tutorial. Yeah, you normally have to go through with uh, this tutorial section where Cosmos gets a turn and it goes back to Xion and it tells you, here, here's how you use your robot. And, well, we're just not going to learn how to use our robot. So yeah. that'd be cool. <laughs> yeah, the glitch causes your tech attacks to do roughly um, five times more damage they should be for your stats. Five-ish, five five plus. Um, yeah. Because that tech attack should only have been doing like 120 or so at this point, around 100 to 120. And you saw it almost did 600 there. So we like that. It's fast. Yeah, being able to max upgrade your tech attacks whenever you want with the glitch, it just completely changes the run. And it's pretty much why this category exists and why it's so different. Because glitchless, you're just you're using your robots the whole game, like 90, 95 percent of the time. But with this no uh our tech attacks do a billion damage so we have no need for the robots all right is this guy gonna be nice he's not being this nice this guy right here in front of the gate he can be a yeah. real troll <sighs> bro <laughs> okay there we go all i had to do is call him bro <laughs> oh he was doing the wiggle thing oh that's really scary. yeah he was doing the wiggle thing on the stairs <laughs> very rude of him okay so we're gonna go immediately into the boss fight of this first dungeon which is called the encephalon cosmos is encephalon specifically we'll be back in cosmos is encephalon later in the game yeah we're currently inside of cosmos's brain trying to get her to learn combat and environment stuff and all that kind of stuff like that but we're gonna beat this boss and then right afterward we're gonna be out of her brain and back into the real world and uh, yeah a lot gonna of the bosses be just gonna get annihilated a lot of these bosses are blinking, you miss it until a bit of the game. <laughs> yeah. And one shot it. Usually and you can one, one shot, shot him with okay. your robot, but at this point, why do that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> also, sadly, we don't get to see much of Alan because it's a speed run and we're skipping the cutscenes, but Alan is actually one of my favorite characters in this franchise. Yeah, same. Alan he is, is your boy. He is the long-suffering love interest of Xion. <laughs> very, very long-suffering. This poor, poor man. <laughs> Xion puts him through all kinds of trials and tribulations. <laughs> and he even appears as a temporary party member in the third game, so that's pretty cool. At the very end. <laughs> <laughs> For like one, for for like literally two screens, unless you backtrack and I don't know, do something else for a while. Yeah. Um, but two screens in a boss fight, he finally gets to join your party in the third game at the very end of it. <laughs> yeah. So right here in the story, it's just uh, we're here in the real world now. We're just doing um some wandering around this big old ship we're inside of. It's called the Woglinde. It's a really big spaceship. And uh, we're just trying to, you know, get our get our footing with how everything works. So we're just going from point A to point B, 
uh, some uh, lots of cutscenes actually. So it's if if anyone knows how the Xeno games tend to be, you know, there's gonna be lots of cutscenes, and in this game, thankfully, you can skip all of them. So yeah, a lot of this, this is, is gonna this be is not this scenes. is not Final Fantasy X. We don't need no cutscene remover. Yeah. So this is Bunny. This is her like special assistant AI companion. Um, you. Bunny appears in the other Xenosaga games, but it's mostly appears in this game. Um, we're not going to be dealing with the email side quests literally at all. They are extremely important to Glitchless, but we do not care about them here. Um, but it's kind of ironic. We got we got multiple bunnies here. Yeah, we got three. Now I'm being stared at. Now I'm being stared at <laughs> by my bunny. Okay. Yeah, the so... emails. There's lots of side quests you can do that will give you like rewards and stuff and we even use them in glitch list because in that category we need money but in this game in this category since we're just destroying everything we don't have to care about money to buy like upgrades and all that kind of stuff so we just ignore the emails mostly yeah i think um unlike in glitch list you only go into the shop twice in um any percent once to get escape packs which um you have to use escape packs to escape from battle it's a weird which... thing with this game <laughs> which kind of sucks you can't just you know hold back buttons to run away or whatever like you can in a final fantasy game um you have to either use a consumable or a um special ether for running away which we'll never getting the ether so we're going to stock up on the escape packs um the other time that you menu is about halfway through the game in order to get some specific uh cure-all items for a very annoying fight called tiamat which we will be getting to tiamat it's a very <sighs> unique boss in this game. Unique's a word for it. Yeah, I, 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 best one I can come up with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the second right. shop visit is just like buying cure status items and some revives because you never know what might go wrong. Because when we're yeah. out of our mechs, we're vulnerable to more statuses and such. So just little extra safety things. Yeah, um, we're going to be just running around the Woglinde doing some um, errands and stuff. So if you got any donations, this is a wonderful time. Oh, yeah, it's great. Uh, that sounds great. I do have a few. And before I get to those, I just want to remind people that we have a couple open incentives for this Xenosaga run. Uh, we have a bid war for choosing the lead character between Xion, Ziggy, Cosmos and Junior. And that's just kind of an ongoing bid war. But we also have a uh, target incentive that we have for swimsuit percent, which will be closing about 60-ish percent into the run. So got roughly about a couple hours. And we're currently at 149 out of 1,000 for that. So you get those donation ins to get that met. And for the donations, we've got $50 from Zero Wing 211 that says, may the day be fruitful for the last day of RPG Limit Break. Good luck to all the runners for today. And we got $5 from Drumboo. It says, break a leg, Scarlet. Donation goes to a red boat to represent the only Pokemon game I've ever beaten. Um, so a little bit of explanation of what swimsuit percent is. The Xenosaga games are kind of infamous for having um, swimsuit optional costumes in every single game. Sadly, Xenosaga 1 is the only game where Ziggy and Cosmos can't wear them. Um, and only two of them are really, really possible to get during a speed run. So swimsuit percent is we're going to be getting, to, would be getting two of those swimsuits and I will have to have Junior and Xion in the party at all times um, in order to force them to wear the swimsuits from that point onward. If you know this game, the point is the Kukai Foundation um, Gnosis attack. So if you know this game, you know when the incentive closes. Because <laughs> that's when we'd be getting the first one. Even though you can technically get one earlier, but it's not safe to do so. All right, we still got, we still got more time if you want to give more donations. This is going to be going for a while. <laughs> yeah, it's plenty of time. Okay, sounds great. Uh, as far as uh, prizes, if you donate, you can get some wonderful prizes too. And there's some stuff that just kicked off, uh, starting with this Xeno Saga run that will be going through the end of the marathon. We've got a uh, we got some patches, some iron on patches of Heartless and Nobody. We got some Sora and Riku Perlers, 
And that big jumbo plush that you've been seeing on the stream this whole marathon, yes, that is also to a prize that you can get by donating with a $50 minimum of donation during the end of the mar uh, during this end of the marathon. So if you want, you can get those as well. All right. So this entire section of the game, uh, the Woglinde, literally is just teaching you the layout of the battleship. Because, I mean, it's, it's a JRPG. It's a space JRPG. Yeah, the ship's going to get attacked by aliens and we're going to have to navigate it <laughs> while it's full of aliens that we cannot actually get into combat with. Or it's it would be a game over if I wasn't getting the escape packs early for safety. Yeah, when we get attacked, there's going to be these aliens that look kind of transparent. And until you get Cosmos ready to go, uh, what happens is you get into a fight with one of them. Uh, you it, It's hard to get away from it. And once you're in that fight and they hit you, they hit you for quad nines <laughs> instead of just a regular hit's worth of damage. <clears throat> so that's pretty much an instant game over if you touch one without an escape pack to get out of there. It's very scary. And there's some really YOLO dodges you can do uh, once the <laughs> attack starts. But uh, you can go for them, I guess. But if you're getting the escape packs, you know, you at least have a way out. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll decide when I get there if I want to go for them because, oh my god, one of them is so annoying. Um, but the in-universe explanation is... So, um, there are these ghosts called the Gnosis. Well, ghost alien things called the Gnosis. They are... <laughs> the way that the game defines it, using their very video game pseudoscience, is they are in imaginary space. They are not technically in the real world, um, but they can affect the real world. So, since they're not technically in the real world, they cannot be interacted with by people, therefore cannot be killed, but they can kill people which is kind of rude of them. They're hacked. Um, yeah, there is something in the universe called the Hilbert effect, which is some sort of wave, science-y stuff. I'm going the wrong way. Um, that can get used to bring them into the real world, and then you can fight them. Um, but the first part of the attack that we'll be doing very shortly they're not in the real world yet, so the game forces you to dodge them all, or run with an escape pack, or die horribly. Yeah. Like, we're not going to be able to actually fight back against them until we get Cosmos, because she's able to use the Hilbert effect to actually bring them into the real world and make them fightable. But, yeah, that's, that's not going to happen yet. We got we to gotta do some dodging to run away from them. So Yeah, these this guys is a here, very... This is a very thinly veiled tutorial for some aliens yeah. later. There's literally going to be two aliens in the exact same spot. Oh, they're actually going to catch me? Oh, no, wait. Oh, I know I ran from them. I didn't actually have to run from them. I got into the explanations. You don't actually have to run from these guys. You can go straight to the door. I'm just... It's 5.30 and 6 in the morning. It's just... <laughs> lacking a little so, bit on sleep. <laughs> lacking a little bit on sleep. What you're supposed to do is what I'm doing right now. Completely ignore them. As they're chasing you and go through this doorway that's what yeah. you're supposed to do yeah you don't have to do their intended tutorial where you loop around the box and go to that uh item that was behind them because we we don't really care about the item in the first place and the other reason was well it's faster just 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 go to the door where you're supposed to go in the first place anyway like who yeah. cares about their tutorial so what i'm doing right here is something that you would normally do later during the attack if but for safety reasons i'm going to do it here um we are going to buy 41 escape packs and as many revives as I can. Now, if this was glitchless, it would be 41 escape packs and one revive, if I recall, right? Uh, at this right. point, I barely remember. I, I I think I don't even get any revives at all, but I could be okay. wrong on that. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure it's 40, um, 41 escape packs and one revive. We your, get a bunch. <laughs> yeah, your G or your currency, um, is very, very set in glitchless. In any percent, we don't care. You actually don't upgrade any equipment at any point during the speed run. Yeah, like um, the most we do is like swap around one ring to people and like that's it. 
and that one ring is pretty nice for how it affects combat but that's like the only piece of gear we really do much with yeah all right so we're headed back to Xion's room right now because she wants to take a nap she's slept Same. she's slept yappy like me like blue metal like probably everybody watching this and most of the crew Sleppy, sleppy. So we're gonna go take a nap, and nothing bad, is, nothing morally or pugnant is going to happen while we're napping. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Okay, we're just gonna be skipping all of the. This game has so many cutscenes. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. I mean, welcome to RPGs, but <laughs> yeah, but even this is excessive. Yeah. If you watch them all, anyway. There's so many cutscenes in a later chapter where there's a, a chapter splash screen in between cutscenes where a whole chapter was just cutscenes. Yep. I think it happens twice. I know it happens at least once. I think it might happen twice. I forget if it's twice, but we know one of them is coming up somewhat soon-ish. Yeah, it's right after the Woodland Day, I think. Yeah. Or, or it's right after Pleroma. I can't remember which. Yeah, it's one of those two times. Oh! Everything's fine. Everything's fine, chat. No red alert signals here. Oh no! Oh no! Aliens! So we're just gonna... yeah. Yeah, this is a required encounter with a Gnosis. I, compl I completely forgot you couldn't use escape packs and it's automatic here. I should have guarded it. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to use an escape pack. But no, this oh. is automatic. She's going to realize she can't fight them and it's going to auto-cancel the fight. Yeah, funny enough, it kills them, but they're off screen, so you can't see that. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to run. So from this point on, it is a, a game over if I get into any fights, unless I use the escape pack. Which I think if you get into a fight, it always gives you the op it gives you a round first, I think. But I forget, I but probably. Ideally? <laughs> <laughs> So here's going to be the first dodge. Hello, friend. There we go. If you take too long on that, he gets through the door and you're caught, pretty much. <laughs> like, I think you can go into that side room, but still. Yeah. And then we're going to distract a Gnosis up here with TV. Although, yeah. you don't actually have to do it. It's really YOLO if you want to go that route, but just, yeah, just make no, it watch I, TV. <laughs> I would never not. There's like, there's no point because nine, 99 times out of 100, you're gonna get caught. Yeah, it's a tough dodge. All right, now it's time to skip my favorite cutscene in the game. Oh, wait, no, I have to go. I forgot that I had to go uh, get the guy first. So we're gonna aggro this guy. Hello, how you doing? And we're gonna go into the side room. He's gonna get angry at us. Which makes no sense, because before they're pulled into the real world, they can totally face through walls. He could go through that wall if he wanted to. But yeah, the dude's lazy. They're, like, smart and dumb at the same time. They phase yeah. through walls to get in the ship, and then when they're in the ship, they forget how walls work. Or rather, how they don't work with walls, and then... So, I, I don't know. It's, what's wrong with them, man? <laughs> yeah. All right. For safety reasons, we're going to go straight back into the room. <laughs> Gonna make a safety save. Yep. We got some shenanigans coming up. All right. You know what? I'm gonna go for it. I just saved. I'm gonna go for it. This yeah, you got is the, the most... save in the escape packs. Do it. <laughs> yeah, this is the most painful dodge, <laughs> probably in the game. Um. Now you can just go up top and suck that gnosis into space, or gonna behave hey first try nice so what makes first that try, every try extra scary is that his hitbox is bigger than the other ones for seemingly no reason so it's yeah. even harder to get away from him if he spots you yeah did you talk to the guy oh no, no god i always forget <laughs> to talk to the guy almost every time i run this game i always forget to talk to the guy thank you um <laughs> But no, this is the point where I'd be getting the escape packs usually, which makes that dodge scarier if you go for it. So we need to talk to this guy. 
Um, he's going to tell you that there's something called the Connection Gear plugin, which lets you blow things up. Um, and we're going to go get it. He's going to secure our retreat. I'm sure he's going to be fine. He's crouched in the corner. He's definitely going to do some work. Yeah. Yeah, he's crouched in the corner in the middle of the room. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure he's fine. So this is when we go talk to this guy in the yellow suit to get the vaporizer plug-in. This is when you would normally do that shopping that I did earlier. Um, because it automatically throws you into the menu. But we're not going to do that because I did it earlier already. All right. So now we have the vaporizer plug in and we can blow things up, which is pretty nice, pretty sweet. But so let's go say hi to our friend. Hi friend, bye friend. So he is, he's, he's fine. He's, he's fine. <laughs> he's fine. Okay. So here's that dodge <laughs> from earlier when I was with those two guys. Except this time we definitely do not want to get caught. No. So I'm going to take this wide yeah, the oh, nose darn it. in back can sometimes oh, get stuck. Which he did. He, which he oh. did. It's fine. I'm far enough ahead. He shouldn't catch me. Oh, okay, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, sometimes oh, that was close. get caught on the wall to the side, but wow, I'm watching it from my end, and it's so close. <laughs> yeah. It's a little, it's a little sus, a little sussy. Yeah. Okay. Rest in All peace, right. Sergeant Swain. Rest in peace, Swain. Um, so we're going to go in here because we got to go find Cosmos, but we can't go the shortcut way because it's blocked off. Um, so we have to take the long way. It's always the long way. Yep. There's some Gnosis just having having a good old time with some eggs in it back there. Don't worry about it. There's the captain of the ship. He's totally going to survive this. There's, there's the dude with the big axe on his face, which is a reference, I think, to the dude with the big T on his face in Xenogears. Yeah. I think his name was Vanderkom, was it? Yeah. I haven't played yeah. Xenogears in a while. All right. So, we got ourselves a Cosmos. Everything is right with the world. Yeah. Which, by the way, we have a bidding incentive for um, who the lead character is. Now, there's going to be some times in the game where I can't pick who the lead character is. Um, but... If you guys want to see Cosmos as the lead character, y'all should donate because it looks like Shion's in charge right now. Shion or Ziggy, because they're technically tied. But if we get some more donations for Cosmos, you guys can see more of my favorite blue, blue-haired, sometimes blue-eyed beauty. Yes. Sometimes. Need more Cosmos. Need more Cosmos. Don't I mean, look at her. <laughs> look at look at her chat. She's she's pretty great. She's pretty great. We like her. Scarlett, have you seen yeah, just... Alan's head glitch here? No. What? No. What? Can Alan's glad? Can Alan's head glitch here? What? Right Hold here. On. Yes. After Xion says something to him, and he looks at her, so there's a really rare instance where his head will glitch and look towards the camera. Oh my god. <laughs> I have a clip of it. I can show you later. It is hilarious. Please do. <laughs> oh. Yoink. So this is telling us how we can open up the bulkheads that were preventing us from getting here earlier. We're going to ignore that. And then we're going to try and see if we can bait this guy. Oh, I almost got caught. Okay. <laughs> but I managed to get it off in time. Yeah, you definitely want to utilize these traps because whenever a uh, enemy touches them, they get frozen. So it's very good for dodging. Anytime you see a I trap, it's probably going to be useful. That's weird. I didn't get caught by the uh, dude by the, uh, the, the, the mini noses. He didn't try going after me. That's, that's, that's weird. He usually always sees you. Yeah, that's why I was like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> Alrighty. So here is the boss of Lolo Glinda. We are going to just immediately murder. Yeah, this boss is always like a scary point for glitchless if you don't know what you're doing, but here in any percent, we're OP, our tech attacks are max buff, he's just gonna go down. I'm Boom. a fire in my laser. <laughs> <laughs> one hit. Or oh, what what's that? What's that overwatch line? One shot, one kill. <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna be doing a bunch of bunch of cutscenes for a minute here, and then we're gonna be going directly into uh the second iteration of the glitch. So if you got some donations, now's the time. 
Sounds great. We definitely have a bevy of donations here. We've got $5 from Quagsire and Friends that said, for a fantastic runner and a fantastic cause, lesson three. We also have $25 from Anonymous that simply just says, money for the bunny. <laughs> and... <laughs> And we've got $50 for Ray M. Desk that says, I want to roll the Sphiel plush because Sphiel is spherical. <laughs> that is that is anatomically correct. Thank you for that one, Ray M. Desk. I and have finally, a we have you can't confirm. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, we've got $50 from K Fizzle that says, Xenosaga is probably my favorite series of all time. And I've been waiting this whole marathon for this run. I'm sitting here following along with my copy of the strategy guide. I have mine still, actually. I have my old one. Um, it's stained and falling apart <laughs> and old. Okay. So here we go. We are now playing as Ziggurat 8, AKA Ziggy. And we are going to immediately pop Xenosaga back out. Yeah, here we go with the glitch again. If you didn't see it the first time, pretty much what happens is you open the menu, pop the disc out, values get scrambled for like upgrades. But if you pop in a disc of the same region, like a completely different game, uh, the values are zeros. So you're pretty much getting your upgrades for free. And that's why Cosmos and Xion were able to just wreck house. <laughs> Yeah, and at this moment, um, we are going to be upgrading Cyber Kick specifically. This is important. It would take too long for us to upgrade both of them, and you need um, you need Cyber Kick specifically for a fight in a later dungeon called the Cathedral Ship. If you were to upgrade um, Lightning Fist instead of Cyber Kick, Perun, the boss later, would be immune to all three tech attacks you could use against him in that fight, which is less than ideal. To... Yeah, you go from being a monster to fighting a monster you can no longer deal with. Yeah. And uh, yeah. shares the same name as a uh, as a uh, rare gacha character from Xenoblade 2, funny enough. But no relation oh, at all, just by name. Yeah, there's Xenoblade 2, there's a, uh, a random draw character you can get named Perun. She's pretty nice. Uh, unlike the mini boss here that we're going to fight at some point later in the run. I'm listening. And there we have a T-posing Ziggy. Hi, T-posing Ziggy. Nice. So we explained it earlier, but this is caused by the fact that the game is looking for the character models on the discs, but because we've done the glitch, it doesn't load the, um, there we go. It doesn't load the uh, animation. So there we go. And for safety reasons, why not? It's there. <laughs> yeah, like the the silly thing is that it it's the game is calling for different things at different moments with that character menu. Like when you have the disc out, it's looking for uh, upgrade values, it's looking for animation data, and it just gets filled with blanks. But it'll still call the disc for the model, which is why you have to put the disc back in, or else it freezes. Yep. Um, because it gets stuck in an infinite loop of trying to find the um, character model on the disc and not finding it. Yeah. Because um, some of the the information, as near as I can tell, what's happening is the information of the um, menu itself is loaded into RAM on the PS2, or in this case, the PS3, because I'm using a backwards compatible PS3. Um, but the rest of the game is not. So if I was to exit out of the menu without Xenosaga in the console, it would also hang. So let's see if I can get all of these dodges. The third one's the scariest. The reason why I'm walking right now is because the game warns you that you're on like very noisy ground. Yeah, there's some loud the floor. One. So if it wasn't pretty clear uh, with dodging some of these enemies, um, a lot of them have really short sight range, but also they have some of them have better hearing than they do like sight so like in this room First try, every try. Around without walking you'd, you'd probably get their attention yeah that's that's great because i usually don't make that i don't usually make that last dodge but i managed to make it that time yeah, that's, that's a tough room it's a pain all right so we have this guy here he's rude we don't like him so the game tells you to distract him but we're not going to do that because it's slow 
Yeah, normally you would operate like a crane or some oh. object over there or... and it'll blow up a thing and get his attention, but I forgot to hit the um hit the uh walk button. <laughs> <laughs> so if I was holding the walk button, I could have um, just walked behind him and left. Um, but because I forgot to hit the walk button, we ran instead and we got into a fight. But there's your first instance of seeing what we're going to be doing for most of this game. It is one thing that any percent and any percent glitchless have in common. We are running from everything. Yeah. Every runnable fight, we are running from it. Oh, I did the thing. Oh, no, I used the wrong attack. Okay. Hey, he's, he's dead anyway. He's dead in one hand anyway. <laughs> you know what? Can I just get away with doing two triangles on this guy instead of doing cyber kick? Yeah, should or be experimenting. able experimenting. Yeah. Well then, I usually use cyber kick on them. <laughs> it would be faster to do this way anyway. Cool. The more you know. So I guess while we have time, I might as well touch on something that was happening in combat. There was something at the bottom right corner, which is... Uh, you had two things down there. There was the uh, turn order window, and then there was the event slot. The turn order window just shows who's going next, and uh, the event slot was this uh, thing next to it that had uh, like four different icons it would cycle through with different effects. And uh, one of them was boost, and that's something that's part of combat. It, that's at least more involved in combat in this category compared to glitchless, where uh, in combat you have this... Um, gauge that builds up like a red bar then it builds up to a number like up to three and what that lets you do is you get to uh hold i think it's r2 or something and press a uh, face button that's corresponding to a specific character of that button and lets you force their turn to be next and uh in the event window if you see like a circle that's going to be extra boost going up but uh i think right now we don't have to worry about boost because the other weird thing about boost is that you can only boost characters that are not in that turn window so you see like Ziggy's in the window and he, he wouldn't be able to boost himself, so. What a lovely boss fight we just had. Yeah, he, he <laughs> kind of walked up, kicked him and he died. And he tried to counter boost, but. Uh, he tried, he... <laughs> tried. Yeah, enemies tried can boost too. Word. Okay, but, so what we're doing right now is we are playing a cyborg called Ziggurat 8. Uh, we are looking for a little cute, adorable girl named Momo who has been captured by the nefarious Utic organization. We have found Momo, but she's behind a locked door because we can't have nice things. Um, yep. But we just found the key, so we're going to be able to go get her. Now, blink it, Blinkle, you'll miss it, because during this area of the game is the only time Momo will be in the party. There's a reason why she and Chaos are not lead character options. <laughs> it's because, sadly, in any percent, they are largely useless, though you will be using Chaos at least once. Yeah, but poor Momo list, just to get you like poor Momo just gets to chill in the back. If you like those characters though, you can use them in glitchless if you want to tolerate that category, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm working on it. For those who don't know, um, Xenosaga glitchless is uh, not the most marathon safe thing, specifically because of one boss fight about halfway through called Gargoyle. Ugh. <laughs> See, yep. Um. <laughs> I'm working on it. I think I I might have figured out a way to make it marathon safe. It's slower, but so we'll see. Maybe it's a uh, RPG limit break. Someday you'll get to see uh, mm -hmm. glitchless, which is significantly slower than any percent. Yeah, for obvious reasons, we're not <laughs> immediately upgraded to max and just one shotting bosses. Sorry, I was very distracted by my bunnies just cuddling on top of their castle right now. All right, so Ziggy just, um, oh, I, I just spoiled it. Ziggurat 8 just got his new name, Ziggy. Yeah, Momo just uh, wasn't happy with the idea that he sounds like he's named after a robot or a, a product or something. He's like, no, I want to call you something real. Where Your name is Ziggy now. And he's and Ziggy it, for the rest of the series. Yeah, and it's a reference. If you actually looked at Ziggy's character model or specifically his concept art even more, um... He's literally Ziggy Stardust, a.k.a. David Bowie. His character yeah. model is modeled after um, David Bowie. That's why his name is Ziggy. <laughs> because he's supposed to be David Bowie, except he's not nearly as fun-loving. Yeah. <laughs> he's kind He's kind of the uh, crotchety old man of the group. Yeah, he's the always serious man. I'm the, I'm the crazy assassin. I know how to do everything. Y'all just sit back and watch. Yeah. 
He's the Orin of this game. Yeah. All right. So we're being chased technically by that boss from before. Um, thankfully, this it isn't difficult to get away from it as long as you uh, know what you're doing and don't get any of the extra stuff. All right. How many times am I going to fall? Am I going to fall? Am I going to fall? I fell. Oh. <laughs> I always fall on the second one. It's fine. Um, I don't think I've ever managed to get all the way across those beams without falling. Oh, you, you can you can walk on that thin pipe, actually. You can, but that's slow. Oh, it is? Yeah. Dang, I never tested it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure it's faster to just run it, and if you fall, go through the muck. Oh, okay. I learned something new. Yep. The more you know... <laughs> All right, so we're going into another mini boss fight. We are going to see Momo for the only time really in combat. She's just going to spend her days guarding until when. Watch the enemy closely and react. Yeah, in Glitch List, this fight is actually hilarious. Like what you would do is you have Momo make one of the green guys fall asleep and the red guy in the middle gets mad. He's like, hey, why are you sleeping? And he takes out his gun and shoots the sleeping guy for a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. But uh, <laughs> in this category here, now we just one shot each to him and just get it over with. Yep. Yeah, especially because doing the whole thing where you make the enemy go to sleep and their own enemy, their own friend shoots them, um, is slow because you have to go through that little mini cutscene. Yeah. Ah, oh, he defended, so he survived the one shot. Rude. Ah. Very rude. You know what? I'm killing your friend first. <laughs> he defended again. Let's go. And that's a uh, second one that should be going down. Yep, there we go. Immediately defend because though we do love Momo, she is uh, useless. <laughs> Sadly. Sadly, she's extremely important and glitchless, but. <laughs> No, we're in, we're just too strong. We don't we don't need her support abilities. Yep, Ziggy too strong. <laughs> and there we go. Mystic powers grant me a miracle. No, no miracles for you. <laughs> that every every character has something that they say when they use what's called their ether abilities, aka their magic. Um, that's what Momo says. You're never gonna hear it. And then Cosmos no, no says something weird in Latin that I don't yeah. know what it means or even how you say it. <laughs> like La Celito Ita or something like that? Yeah, something like that. Oh, Cosmos has to be special at all times. Yeah. And then coming up here, we're going to be fighting one of the main villains of the game. His name is Margulis. Now, normally in a, in a glitchless run, you would just let him kill you and the, the the game still continues it's like a mandatory game over but you can tough it out and actually beat him in a fight and obviously here since we're all p well we'll just we'll just destroy him instead because <laughs> it is faster than waiting for him to uh knock out your characters yeah Alrighty, and that is pleroma the second like well i guess technically third major dungeon in the game we're, now we're going to be skipping a bunch more cutscenes and doing some running around on the Elsa where we're not really going to be doing anything important. So if you've got any donations, now's the time. I can provide donations for you. Uh, so before I get to them, I just want to remind people that uh, we've got a couple active uh, incentives going on. We've got a uh, choosing the lead character bid war that right now has... Uh, Shion and Z Ziggy uh, tied at 100, and we got Cosmos at 15, and Junior's just sitting there waiting for, for some love. <laughs> so if you want to throw some love to Cosmos and Junior, you can. And we've also Cosmos. got a swimsuit percent. Oh, Cosmos. My apologies. <laughs> uh, swim, uh, we got a swimsuit percent uh, that we're at now 249 out of 1,000. So we've made some headway, but we got a little bit of a ways to get there. And that's, you got about an, another hour and 30 minutes for that. So if you want to see that, it will be a really cool like addition to the run. And getting to those donations, we've got $50 from 
Hustler Bo Jenkins that says, here goes nothing. Rolling the dice for a giant steel friend for Piplup, a.k.a. J. Hobbs. Donating during a great game as well. Wishing luck to all of the remaining runners uh, on their runs. Don't forget incentives. I'm going to I'm going for naming the player, of course, in Pokemon Arceus. And then we've got $100 from Purple Mario 920 that says, Thanks again to everyone for the fun times in the Dragon Quest V run. As promised, $10 per party chat, plus another $30 for good measure. Hope the rest of the runs go well. You still got a few. Keep going. All right. I just want to remind people that here at RPG Limit Break 2023, we are proudly supporting the National Alliance on Mental Illness, a.k.a. NAMI. To get involved in the fight against mental illness and the stigmas it can bring, reach out to NAMI via their state organizations or on Facebook, where they can be found as NAMI, and on Twitter and Instagram as at NAMI Communicate. It's not a weakness to need help. Please reach out if you think you need help. All right, so the point of this entire area of the game is just like on the Wokeland Day, it's teaching you the layout of a place before inevitably it gets attacked. Um, the excuse it's using is we are going to get, uh, going to bring food to a guy called Commander Cherenkov. Commander Cherenkov is the bane of Glitchless. Uh, Blue, yeah. do you want to explain why Glitchless hates that man? He turns into freaking gargoyle, okay? It sucks. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, there is something that the Gnosis can do um, because they're very rude like that. If a Gnosis grabs a person but doesn't kill them, like, I don't know, they get, um, they get destroyed or attacked or for whatever reason lets the person go, the act of having touched the person is, it, in a weird way infects them with something that eventually, over time, will turn them into a Gnosis. And um, he turns into a really terrible boss that we hate dealing with. Yep, and there are two characters who have been touched by Gnosis and survived thus far. One of them is Commander Cherenkov. The other one is Shion. Man. She'll be fine. I, I, I wonder what she would look like if she was a Gnosis. Probably something awful. Probably. In my live stream, I'm well known for actually not liking Shion at all. <laughs> <laughs> Understandable. Which is why I am rooting for somebody to donate so we can be Cosmos as often as possible because, gosh, Shion infuriates me. Well, since it's tied, maybe every now and then he can swap to Ziggy. That's true. That's true. Nothing's stopping me from swapping to Ziggy once we get him in our party, which he's not right now, so we're Shion. But Cosmos is the best. Y'all should donate to. Y'all should donate to see the blue beauty all the time. Yes. Because she's pretty great. Also, one funny thing to note is that um, when you're running around with the curry, with the food, you can still shoot things and blow up objects, <laughs> like the crates in the area. And it looks funny when she's standing there holding the food and just a blast comes out of the front of her body for no reason. <laughs> just really yep. silly looking. All right, so we've got more time for donations because I'm literally going to be going back the way I came to the second level of the ship and going literally literally all the way back to where we found Cherenkov because this game likes its backtracking in the beginning. There's much less backtracking later, thankfully. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, also want to talk about one of our awesome partners here at RPG Limit Break, the Yeti. RPG Limit Break is proud to once again partner with the yeti to bring you six awesome t-shirts that are now available and they are really cool head over to the yeti.com slash rpg limit break or rpg lb and take a look at the designs uh pick up the ones you want and you uh five dollars from every uh, purchase will go directly to nami remember Yeti is spelled Y-E-T-E-E -E -E, at the yeti.com slash RPG LB. Yeah, I really like the Parasite Eve t-shirt. I didn't get it. I got the regular runner one because I have a uh, I have plans for my runner t-shirts. Um, so I got the regular event one, but the Parasite Eve one's pretty great looking. 
I actually got it. It, it is with the massive fist and gun is fantastic. <laughs> so, yeah. so weird, funny tangents because I also um, run Parasite Eve New Game Plus. Uh, one thing that always bugs me about that game specifically, completely unrelated tangent, if you ever go back and watch the footage from that run, you will notice something very strange about Eve. Her hands change size constantly. It's the same character model, but there's a small-handed character model and a massive-handed character model. There is no explanation as to why they keep doing that. Wow. So just something for when you go back and watch that VOD. I mean, if you take the average of those two, it kind of evens itself out. <laughs> She just has the... Well, no, because the first one is average normal hands, and the second one is the weird double-elbowed massive hands. So, like, what would be the middle of those two? It's, it's something to think about. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> it's just a weird parasite tangent in the middle of Xenosaga. It happens when you have somebody who's usually a horror speedrunner playing a game. Um, so, what we've done there is there was a weird malfunction in the... Um, like grapple arm cargo area of the ship, the Captain Matthews, the person who pilots the ship, which is called the Elsa, um, asked Shion to go take a look at it because she's sort of an engineery tech robot type. So she went and took a look at it and went like, it's fine, I don't see no glitch. Of course, uh, it's gonna cause something awful to happen later. <laughs> They're just putting that Chekhov's gun right on the mantle. So an instance of the car doesn't make the noise when the mechanic looks at it. But of course, something's mm -hmm. gonna go wrong when uh, when you're done checking on it. My rabbit thinks she can overturn the castle. Funny, why are you silly? Y'all should donate for the rabbits. Donate in honor of the rabbits. Tell me how much they're adorable. And put it towards Coco. And I want to hear all your best... Yeah, and you can also share all of your best rabbit slash bunny puns there you go because i'm always here for puns all right so we're going to skip some of my other favorite cutscenes in this game so they're in hyperspace um they call umn columns or hype or also hyperspace um now the escape ship that is being piloted by momo and ziggy just so happened to come across elsa the elsa and shion and cosmos and all of them somehow in the middle of hyperspace and they're currently having a space battle um momo and ziggy's little spaceship just got uh, captured by the elsa because it was about to get obliterated um but it got snatched the last second so they're currently on the ship but that uh malfunction in the grapple arm that has happened and because of that it left the ship wide open to get completely boarded by all of the enemies so now we have to fight our way. Oh no, my alarm's going off. Okay, no, it's fine. <laughs> okay, I just have my alarm for, hey Scarlet, it's time to wake up. <laughs> Good morning. All right, so the Elsa is being taken over by all of these uh, mechs that were chasing Ziggy and Momo. Um, for some reason, Shion decided, oh no, we're gonna close that because there's enemies over there, and we're going to electrify the floor so they just get stuck. Um, this is just the game forcing you to take the other direction, so you get so you get joined with Momo and uh, Ziggy immediately. But it also cuts off the faster way to get to where we need to go. Okay. It's always got to be the long way. Yup, because we can't have nice things, except for donations to charity. Those are nice things that we should have. Yes. So now it's time for me to button press a bunch because for some reason the cutscene of our characters all meeting, all but one of our characters um, meeting each other, isn't voiced. <laughs> it's not an actual cutscene, so it forces you to uh, button mash through it. It's not this one, it's gonna be the next one once we get out of this room. So, this will be our final time with Momo and the party. Let's see how many fights I get in. <laughs> Ideally, zero. Ideally zero, but uh, nope, I'm gonna get one. Yep. Oh. He turned around at the worst possible moment. Welcome to some of these uh, encounters in this game. A lot of them are dodgeable, but some of them are obnoxiously tight or just really 
annoying with their RNG movement patterns. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm going to walk past him, no problem. Oh, he happens to turn oh, around and look oh. like it's the worst time. <laughs> yeah, I thought that guy was further down than he was. Okay, so we're getting two oh. fights. I usually get two fights in this room. You can get through it with zero, but... It's, it's tight. It's and very tight. luck based. Yeah. <laughs> So this is, you know, Ziggy, so um, I'll be able to choose between Ziggy or Shion as our on-screen character from now because we, at this moment, will have them both in the party because they have met up. Yeah, let's go, let's go with Ziggy because we've seen a lot of Shion up to this point. We have seen a lot of Shion. I do need to go into them anyway to make sure that, because I can never remember if it populates the correct characters in your party. Oh, yeah. Because once uh, characters are split up and put back together, or just after long cutscenes, the game dictates how um, which characters are in your party, and it's definitely the ones you want. Always changing your party around after. It's really. Yeah. When cutscene stuff happens, story stuff happens, you're using this party now, god dang it. It's like, well, yep. no, I don't want to. So, yeah. We just have to button mash through all of this dialogue because for some reason, all of the principal characters except for one meeting each other, not important enough for a cutscene. The thing I always take notice to the most with this scene is Momo's stare of death. Her death <laughs> stare, just just give it a, oh no, it's already, it already showed the death stare, never mind. Yeah, because when it zooms, when Ziggy introduces her and it does that little zoom up and pan up, she's just death staring <laughs> and bobbing her head. <laughs> I don't think she's even blinking, is she? I don't think anyone is no. blinking. <laughs> no blinking. No blinking, only death stare. Come on, cutscene. We got we got places to be. All the other ones in the game are skippable, but this one ain't because it's not voiced. Because it's not an actual quote unquote cutscene. Yeah. There's a little bit of a wait for it. There it is. <laughs> the weird unblinking death stare. <laughs> Didn't someone make that an emote? I swear I've seen it before. They might have. I don't I don't have it as an emote. Okay. So we have all of the characters that we want. We are now Ziggy. Because as far as I know, they're still tied. They are indeed still tied as of now. Uh, do we have time for a couple more donations? We do. All right. So uh, at least somebody out out there heard your your call for more Cosmos. And uh, Cyberdark86 uh, with $50 says, we need Cosmos on screen. And I'm going to try my best robot voice here. The enemies have been exterminated. Oh, God. Uh, that, that's what Cosmos says when it, um, a lot of the times when she uh, is the final character to do an attack in battle. Because whoever is the final hit gets to have a fun voice line. She needs to be cleaned. Now, yeah. Shion, my external experience <laughs> and my external appearance is down 5%. Shion, I need to be cleaned. <laughs> that's my favorite one. <laughs> And then we also have $50 from Zokuban that says, I was told our host wanted honeys and thought the request was irresistible. <laughs> Good luck on the run, Scarlet. And here's to that open swimsuit incentive, which as I refresh right now, we are at now 299 out of $1,000. So we need another oh. $700 to hit that incentive and about an hour 15 ish something around there so if you want to see that cool incentive uh, make sure to donate towards that what's uh what's cosmos sitting at right now for the lead character so with that update uh cosmos is now sitting at uh 65 dollars with shion and ziggy still at 100 a pop almost so this boss can be a little annoying because uh, on his very first turn, he's going to use a move called Tremor, which hits everyone for a lot of damage, like a big old quake. And anytime he gets a turn on that event slot, like that thing I told you about next to the turn order, has like four different icons it cycles through on every turn. Whenever 
he gets a turn on that slot, he's going to use Tremor, which does a lot of damage. And you really want Shion to not die here so that she can do big damage. But I think you Thanks. might kill him before that's an issue, right? Yeah. Sometimes if you're lucky and you get a crit, you can kill the boss in two hits. But it's going to take us three. There we go. Nice. We're going to have a bunch more cutscenes. So if you got any donations, it's another it's another cutscene skipping fest. All right, I love cutscenes because that does indeed mean more donations. All right, we've got fifty dollars from Penguin with a gun that says donating for the precious bunny hopping around in the background. Yeah. And uh, the names are I've seen a couple people ask in chat. Uh, the names are Garrus and Tali. They are named after uh, yeah. Garrus Vicarian and uh, Tali Zora Vas Normandy. Nice. From Mass Effect. And yes, yeah, so Mass Effect is a great series. Uh, and if you want to donate for all these wonderful incentives that I've been uh, reminding people about, you can also get some wonderful prizes as well. A uh, few of them just need a $5 uh, minimum donation to get some perlers and. Uh, and some iron-on patches from Kingdom Hearts. And we also have, a uh, for $10, we've got an Octopath Traveler to Steam Key. And finally, I've seen a lot of people do the $50 donation recently. If you do $50 minimum donation from here through the end of the marathon, you can get that big Sphiel Jumbo plush that you've been seeing through uh, in the crowd during the marathon. So if you want one of those awesome prizes you can uh donate to that through the end of the marathon okay we are now playing as junior who is the last um principal main character that we are eventually going to get into our party this is actually the only part of the game that is played entirely glitchless because for some reason um the game does not allow you to upgrade junior in this section so it's kind of weird even yeah, even though um, this is the only fight that forces him immediately into the mech, um, even even when you're just running around, it won't let you upgrade him. Um, my guess is it's because of the guest party members you have. That's my assumption. That maybe there's like something with that that's preventing it. But um, because of that, welcome to Glitchless for 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, this is what glitchless combat would look like you uh spend one turn guarding so that you get six ap those arrow things and then on your following turn when you have six ap you can use both weapons at the same time if you have two of the same weapon equipped for big damage but as you can see with the any percent setup we've been rolling with uh our big damage is better than that next big damage so we usually just avoid doing this entirely but in this chapter uh we have no choice we gotta we gotta use the max all the time, and it's kind of a taste of what the glitchless combat would be like, which is kind of boring. Not gonna lie, but yeah, the is. glitchless glitchless combat is everybody goes into the max immediately. Guard W act. Guard W act. Guard W act. The yeah, entire game. <laughs> pretty much. I love the music in this game. It's so good. Yeah. Funny thing about the music, I know that um, some people were excited to see this game because the music was uh, composed by Mitsuda, who did Xenogears and some other really good, notable games. But most of the music is in the cutscenes. And uh, for some reason, uh, they decided that a lot of the overworld navigation is going to be ambience, aside from some other situations like the crisis music and a couple other dungeons and combat. So the music you'll hear in a speed run is mostly the same handful of songs, whereas all the good songs everyone knows from this game, yeah, they're in cutscenes, sadly. Yeah, I think the only dungeons that have ambient music, it, not including the ones that use the crisis music, like um, the Kukai Foundation or the Woglinde, um, are Song Nephilim and Proto Merkava. 
yeah. which are the final two dungeons of the game. Though, because of that, um, there is something called the EBS simulator, which is this game's excuse to let you go back to previous dungeons um, without having something like an overworld map that just lets you do that. It's essentially a battle simulator that lets you go through previous dungeons. Um, the thing is, if an area has the um, crisis music when you play through it in the game normally, when you go back in the simulator, dead silence. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're playing as Junior. We're running around what's called the Utic Battleship. Um, I'm definitely going to get into a fight here. I'm going to get into multiple fights here because most of these dodges are... Uh, see, I'm dodging this just fine here. On the way back, I'm ha I pretty much have to get into a fight because I don't think you can dodge them on the way back. You can. It's just really... It's it's kind of tight. The, the, the way yeah. you do it is cool, but it's, it's hard. Like, yeah. this is my favorite yeah. chapter in the whole run as far as dodging goes because you can do a lot of these dodges and they look really cool, but they're also really tough. Like for the, uh, the two guards here on your way back, what you can do is you quickly like step into their sight range and immediately step out of it. And it makes them turn around because they just lost track of you. But yeah. the exact positioning to do that is really weird, really tight. So it's, oh. it's tough, but it's, it's really cool. There's a lot of dodges. I accidentally, I accidentally used a med kit instead of my escape pack. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I accidentally hit up and served down. So, um, you may have seen there before I got into the fight, um, that, uh, okay, let's actually properly get out. There we go. Um, that I made sure to go to the side to aggro the second guard. The reason that I did that is this game has a weird glitch in it. If you run into an, quote unquote, run into an enemy, um, before it's properly aggroed on you, um, then you run away from the fight the game sort of bugs out and it glues the enemy to your backside and the enemy will start running with you glued to your backside and there is nothing you can do about it and you will get into a second fight yeah i definitely ran into that a bunch of times back in the day mm -hmm. it's an absolute pain okay let's see if i can make the second dodge i almost never make this dodge the way I think about it is uh, you you run on the line and mash to save your life oh he got me right at the end <laughs> oh Junior doesn't like these guys. I got no time. Um, yeah, that particular dodge, I think I only do it like 25% of the time. Um, because it's such a tight timing. It sort of depends on the enemy's RNG. But... Yeah, it also helps if you like mash on that door because sometimes it might give you just yeah. a little bit of edge. A little bit more, which is what I was doing. I was mashing it. It just told me no. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if I can get this. Am I gonna get this? Who goes there? Yeah, boy. <laughs> get to the door, get to the door. Oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> I've never seen that guy on the right kind of just walk away from his post. He doesn't always do it, um, but that's how I get through there. At least sometimes without getting in a fight. Usually I have to get into a fight anyway. Okay, so we needed to get that card. Let's see. I know that you can dodge these guys. How do I... Uh... There we go. That's how you do that. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> I always get hit by this guy. What, the spider? Because there's pretty much... Yeah, the spider. Yeah, that one there's... is also really silly. If you were to, like, stand next to the wall, like, right after you get past the guards, the spider just runs into the wall and just turns around. He just loses track of <laughs> you, touches the wall. Yep. It's really weird. But I managed to dodge the other two guys, so I'm gonna take it. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we got the key card that we need. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get to the uh, bridge of the Utic battleship. This is the, uh, okay, <laughs> let's back up a little bit. So the Woglinde that got attacked when Shion was on it, it sent out a big distress signal while it was getting torn apart by aliens. Both the Utic organization and um, Junior's ship, called the Durandal, answered said um, distress signal and came to find it. The thing is, they don't like each other. So, yeah. So he just takes this opportunity to board and uh, get some info and stuff from the uh, computer he's trying to access. Yeah, and by board, I mean what Junior says during the cutscene to his pilot is, give him a little nudge. <laughs> by little nudge is... He speared the other ship with his. <laughs> yeah. 
Junior's kind of like that. He's not the he's not the smartest. <laughs> he gets the job done by um, other means. Yeah, his his method of doing things is brute forcing. Which this is another one of the few cutscenes in the game that isn't actually a cutscene, so I can't skip it. Um, essentially, we're on the bridge now. There's no one there. Oh no! So we have to figure out how to access their mainframe to get all of their data off. What Junior's going to do is he's essentially going to face plant a keyboard and uh, trigger the safety mechanism. <laughs> just Junior things? Yeah, he just Junior things. He's like, hey, come look at this. And his friend Mary Shelley, yes, that is who she's named after. Well, Mary. Um, she's like, don't touch that. I'm the tech person. Let me do that. And Junior's like, no, nah, it doesn't look hard and starts hitting things. <laughs> Which turns out it was hard because computer science is difficult, and he triggers the safety, which is going to cause a boss fight very shortly. Good job, Junior. Um, it's kind of a track record for him to do things like that. In the cutscene direct that we're going to be skipping directly after the boss fight, he gets a little gun happy with the bosses and the enemies around him, and starts like doing flips, and in the process, shoots the connection that his uh, partner there is using to try and get all the data off. So they end up not really being able to get anything anyway and went through this for nothing because he got a little gun happy. Just just junior things, man. <laughs> just just junior things. <laughs> also, he's 28 years old. Yeah, uh, he, he more or less oh, because of uh, backstory reasons, his age is more or less frozen. Yeah, um, he is 28 years old and he is stuck in a 14 year old's body. Yeah. So this boss can be a little bit annoying. Uh, like he has a high chance of counter boosting when he's hit by something that's not uh, blades. And our mech on the left can use blades and whenever he hits the boss with them, it lowers his chance to counter boost. But obviously if you're unlucky, he'll just counter boost anyway. When- uh, That, that he just your, did. Yeah, yeah, which is what yeah. he just did. Junior and Mary are your damage dealers and your sword guy just kind oh, of reduces counter boost rate but clearly it didn't seem to matter I accidentally guarded with junior instead of using the w act whoops Boop. and there's another boost oh, i'm getting all of the bad luck thankfully we have blade dude coming in clutch Knocking down the oh no, nope, and just straight up killed the dude. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that is the Utic battleship completed. Now it's time for our favorite, more cutscenes. Yeah. If you got any? If you got any donations, now's the time. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Well, I just want to. Uh, remind everybody that not only do we have the wonderful stream here, but we want to also send out thanks to the people involved in our foreign language restreams. We have our French restream that can be found at twitch.tv slash le French restream and our Japanese stream at twitch.tv slash Japanese underscore restream. And if those restreams can help you enjoy the marathon, go ahead and check them out and send them some love as well. And again, just want to remind people that we are raising money for NAMI. NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, is the nation's largest grassroots mental health organization. NAMI provides advocacy, education, support, and public awareness to improve the lives of all individuals and families affected by mental illness. NAMI exists to ensure that no one is alone on their mental health journey. All right, so we are docked at a place called the Dock Colony. Um, it's just a short interlude that's supposed to be an excuse for you to um, get all the items and all the equipment for the most painful dungeon in the game, in my opinion. <laughs> it's definitely one of them. Um, called the Cathedral Ship, which I brought up earlier. But right now we're going to go get Ziggy, and I do see that it looks like Ziggy's decidedly in the he ahead now, so we're going to switch to him immediately um, for our on-screen character. 
but Commander Cherenkov has gone missing on the dock colony. Oh no. We have to go find him because reasons. I think we should just leave him, but. <laughs> That'd be prefer preferable, but uh, uh, yeah. Uh, gargoyle. Gargoyle. Y'all, y'all, you're gonna see a gargoyle at the end of um, Cathedral Ship. It's the final boss of Cathedral Ship. Hi, Chaos. So we haven't brought up Chaos yet. Chaos is another um, party member. You're only really gonna see him in battle um, once. Once. Yeah. If we get, one? yeah, it's just once. Um. If we get a uh, swimsuit present, you'll see him again because I actually use him for um, the boss fight that you have to do as part of a uh, swimsuit present. Um, but yeah, ideally just once. I hear Chaos is a very talented individual. He is. He's, <laughs> al he's also very old. He's also very old. Yeah, like, that's why his hair is gray. Very, <laughs> very old. Um, he is, what, 6,000 years old, at least? <laughs> Give or take, yeah. Yeah. The players don't know that. You don't really find out about that definitively until the third game. But no, he's about 6,000 years old. He's very he's very spry looking for 6,000 years. My favorite thing about Chaos is the silly thing in relation to Cosmos is why his name is spelled in all lowercase. And yeah. The reason <laughs> is purely because Cosmos' name is, all, is spelled in all caps. That's yep. literally the reason why he's all lowercase. Yep. His, the C in chaos is spelled with a lowercase C in every usage of it in the franchise. Um, and it is just because Cosmos is, uh, is uppercase. Did we explain why Momo and Cosmos' names are in all uppercase? Uh, I don't I, think we have. I don't think so. I had to let, let that cutscene play just long enough to see Trank get thrown into a wall. <laughs> um... <laughs> But the reason why Momo and Cosmos' names are both all in uppercase in every usage of them is because they are acronyms. Um, do you remember what they're acronyms for? Uh, I, I never remember metal. Momo's. But <laughs> Cosmos is the best part about her acronym is that it has her own name in it. The mm -hmm. K in Cosmos is Cosmos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, her... her um... Her name, Cosmos, stands for Cosmos Obey Strategic Multiple Operations Systems. And Momo's is, um, oh god, what's the first word? I just had it in my head. Mimetic? I can't remember what the first M's. Mim no, Mimetic. no, Mimetic Organicus is the last two. Oh. Um, it's something observed, oh, Multiple Observative Mimetic Organicus. That's what it is, I'm pretty sure. That's that, That's too much. That's too much. <laughs> you can't say that ten times fast. I can't even say it once normal speed. <laughs> it's because of the second word, observative. Is that even a word? I don't Probably know. a word. It just doesn't sound like it's a word. But no, their names are acronyms, and that's why they're in all caps. All right, so we have finished the dog colony section. All we have to do is get all the way back up to Matthews and we can go on to our favorite dungeon. Yay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the cathedral ship, it's pretty much just an absolutely massive gnosis. And the, it's the a, dungeon it's a is a big reference. Of, yeah. Yeah. Inside it's a big, big reference. It's a big reference to the. Um, a lot of the references in this game are very um, biblical, Judeo Christian inspired. This one is inspired by um, Jonah and the whale because the Elsa gets eaten <laughs> by a giant gnosis that's shaped like a giant whale. Yeah. Because this game is subtle. Yeah, and you'll see like some bits and pieces of like uh, familiar looking terrain, like buildings and billboards and stuff like that. Because uh, the, this Gnosis, I guess, has uh, taken in other things besides our ship. And uh, Oh, no, no. Um, there, there's a specific reason for the cathedral ships, actually. In an oh, yeah. earlier cutscene, um, in an earlier cutscene that we skipped, you got to see the explosion of a planet called Ariadne. Um, this is the Gnosis that ate that planet. <laughs> yeah.
And the reason why we hate this dungeon is uh, there's a lot of encounters that are really hard to get around. Like there's a lot of tight corridors with an enemy filling up most of it. And as you've seen with some other enemies we've tried to dodge previously, uh, they're hard to get around sometimes. There's RNG to their movement. Their hitboxes can be fairly large. So it's a lot of these dodges are really tough and very, yeah. very luck based. I mean, I just got two luck based, three luck based ones in a row. Nice. <sighs> yeah. Okay, this is the cutscene where we find out that it's Ariadne because they see a billboard that says uh, Ariadne. <laughs> but we're going to skip that because that's slow. Yeah, and the dodges following that cutscene are the ones that have gotten me the most whenever I was doing all the labbing and practicing and stuff. This little corridor here is the worst. Okay, let's see if I can. And. Oh, darn it! I didn't get around the, uh... I didn't get around the box in time. Oh. Sorry. Also, I forgot to switch out, um, Chaos. All right. need to remember to do that. We're gonna do it after this dodge. Come here! Thank you! Oh, he got me again! <laughs> no. God, I hate this corridor. This, this, this area sucks. <laughs> Like yeah, I usually get three like three enemies in a four. row, and it's just three enemies in a row, and there's no room to dodge around them. So you're all almost always gonna get hit by at least at least a couple of them. Yeah, and you gotta make best use of the traps as you can. But even then, or just, there's uh... four of them. It's not three. There's four. I forgot about the fourth guy. Oh yeah, <laughs> I forgot too. Jeez. Less I. Okay. This is fine. It could be worse. Come on, get it, get it. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to switch my character. So battle formation, chaos, we don't need you because you are useless. We are Cosmos. Because the ideal party for most of the speed run is um, uh, Ziggy, Cosmos, Junior for reasons that will become obvious later. All right. Hello, friend. Please, please go the other direction. Hello. Are you gonna... Bro. <laughs> yeah, there's gonna be many instances just... where we're just waiting to dodge enemies or just there we go. having a staring contest with them until they decide to move. Yeah. It just Thanks wanted a hug. Playing nice on the backside. Sorry. I said it just wanted a hug. It just wanted a hug. Oh, there's some no, big old green dudes you'll see soon who will actually want a hug if you look at them. <laughs> yep. Um, those enemies, by the way, the little uh, four-legged looking things, those are called Cerberus, I believe. I can't remember most of the um, enemy names, but I remember that one. For the one I remember the most is Troll, because he <laughs> troll? Kind of like yeah. a troll. <laughs> They're Troll, Cobalt, um, Cerberus. They're all very mythology-inspired, as is a lot of the enemies in JRPGs tend to be. Okay. Are you going to behave? Get it? Behave. I, aren't these it's little the bug bee. dudes, aren't they, like, named Fairy or something? Something like that. It's either the ones here or the ones later that are called Fairy. Okay. Nope, you're not behaving. Oh, no, you are behaving. Never mind. Or no, oh, okay. Okay, let's see, do I, uh, come here. Is he far enough to the side? Nope, he wasn't, darn it. <laughs> oh. That guy was right in the worst possible spot to get around him. Great. The other you may see that thing. my, uh, you may see that my characters look very low on health. That's because I have yet to heal from the last fight. Yeah, a lot of the time the game will not heal you after a important boss or story chapter thing. A lot of other games will, but this one doesn't. Mm -hmm. And uh, one silly thing to point out with uh, enemies getting hit by traps is that they'll do an animation where they kind of like maybe move back or something like that. And it's really deceiving because their hitbox isn't moving, but their model in the animation is, which is very weird. Oh, let's see. There, there's that green guy that likes to, uh, he wants hugs. Okay, he didn't see you, so we didn't get to see the hug. 
Nope, no hugs. No <laughs> hugs today. This is a no hugging zone. <laughs> no hugging allowed. No hugging allowed. Oh, hi, how you doing? I'm being careful with when I run and when I walk because obviously the walking makes it more likely for them to aggro onto you. Oh, leave me alone! Am I gonna get that dodge? Maybe. Goodbye. <laughs> All right, let's see if I can get this last one. Uh, uh, oh, he's behaving. Nice. Okay. I'm gonna drop a. I'm gonna heal. Actually, <laughs> do I have a biosphere? Uh, I don't care that much. Medicas for everyone. So this is an ether um, that lets you heal. It's literally your cure. And just for safety reasons, pop in a save. I guess you could buy biospheres if you really want to. Yeah. But that takes effort. True. All right. I can't remember if the dodge is before. Okay, now this is, uh, here's Perun. The fight that I talked about earlier where um, I upgraded the character's tech attacks in a very specific way. This is the reason why. This is the reason why Ziggy has Cyber Kick instead of the other one. Yeah, some enemies and bosses are immune to certain elements of attacks, and uh, we need something that's not. Was it Beam that he that he absorbs Beam and like Beam and lightning? lightning? Yeah. Beam and lightning. Sword and as it turns one. out, yeah, as it turns out, um, Spell Ray, which was Shion's tech that we upgraded, and Arcanon, which was Cosmos's are both beam attacks. Yeah. And there's Peru. One shot, one kill. Um, if you were to have upgraded Lightning Kick instead of Cyber Kick, all three of their tech attacks would be um, absorbed by the boss, so you'd have to do the fight uh, glitchless slash manually. Yeah, that, that does not sound like a fun time. <laughs> time for the bane of my existence in Cathedral Ship. Oh, I've yeah, only ever enemy. managed I've only ever managed this dodge once. Yeah, I just let him hit me. <laughs> yeah, this enemy. So weirdly he weirdly he didn't aggro. Really weird. Yeah, weirdly he didn't aggro before he touched me, so we might get the bug after. Yeah, what this oh, enemy yeah. does is really strange. Like he has this he has a regular behavior before oh, he okay. sees you or gets into a counter where he just kinda walks around all willy nilly RNG like a lot of the other enemies. But if he gets into an encounter or if he sees you and then you lose aggro on him, he just does this thing where he paces left to right across that area. It's it's weird. It, yeah. I don't see many other enemies that do that. Nope. All right. So we are coming up on the boss area. Not the boss itself, because we have a little bit to do. Um, can you not? Can you not? <laughs> okay, he caught me. I got I got hugged. Yeah, you hugged the green man. Yep, I got hugged by Shrek. <laughs> that happens. Sometimes it'd be like that. All right. Time for more cutscene skipping. <laughs> My favorite. Hi, Trankov. Bye, Trankov. So part of um, this section is we're trying to go find the Elsa. Because for some reason, even though everyone was inside the ship, um, when it got eaten by the Gnosis... Let's just do this dodge real quick. Uh, I'll finish explaining in a second. I'm do this carefully. Hello? Dodges in this room are really tight. Yeah. Um... What was I saying? Right. So the Elsa got eaten by the Gnosis. But uh, for some reason, even though everyone was inside the ship, your party got thrown out into a random part of the Gnosis, and Cherenkov got thrown out to another part of the Gnosis, and the Elsa is in a third location. Um, rather annoying. Okay. Go right first before left. Um, because of that, we're trying to go find the Elsa which is kind of our whole shtick here, but it gets intercut with cutscenes of Trinkov wandering around, getting more and more suspicious. 
because he's slow. He's having all kinds of weird memories coming to him about his past and he's slowly turning into a gnosis. If you've never played the game, you're like, what is wrong with this man? Um, very soon we will see what is wrong with this man. Yeah, even outside of the whole gnosis thing, he was already a very, very troubled individual. He's oh yeah, you a lot you know at this point, happened. yeah, you know at this point in the game already that he was on the Wuglinde as a spy to begin with. Whoa, what are you doing here? Hold up. <laughs> the uh, the lizard enemy crossed to the other side while I was trying to get through there. Yeah, that's not very common. No, not at all. But at least it means the right or the left side was clear. All right. So what we're doing is we're trying to um, get the elevator that's currently stopped to not be stopped anymore. Okay, apparently I'm going up the ladder first. <laughs> I hit the hitbox for the ladder on accident. Yeah, I usually just hold right, and then it's like, well, I guess he's just going to go up the ladder. All right, uh, yep. I'll go with whichever the game forced me to go with. Yep. Yeah, do both anyway. It doesn't matter. Oh, God. It's so weird to be running around as Ziggy. It's messing with my vibes. <laughs> yeah, right? You're usually used I'm to usually... running around as Shion, but it's like, no. No, I'm Ziggy? usually used to running around as Cosmos because oh, I yeah, switch yeah. her. <laughs> I, I, I take the time, like the couple seconds of time lost to switch to Cosmos every chance I get when I'm playing this, um, when I'm running this on my own. I'm a perfectionist, so I don't do that as much as I really want to. Mm -hmm. It's because of my uh, vehement dislike for Shion. <laughs> And uh, my absolute love, love for my blue beauty. Yes. Okay. Oh, cool. Lizard Lizard was on the other side on the way back, too. By the way, I noticed something in uh, when you were running through before. Why did they decide to put that plant hidden in that one cubicle and just jump out at you like a jump scare? Because <laughs> reasons. If you were to go, the reason why I didn't go through the center is because there is another one of those in another cubicle, and that one's not really dodgeable. The one on the right is dodgeable. Um, this game likes to put enemies in places that are functionally undodgeable, um, and other ones that are only dodgeable if you know what you're doing. All right, now it's time to uh, play follow the leader. My favorite thing to do in this room is wait for the lizard to get far ahead enough so that I can shoot the thing next to the, uh, like, shoot the object to the right. And right after I shoot it, I just run around mashing R2 and it looks so silly. <laughs> like, you're just kind of stuttering around with this weird walk what, jitter like animation this? with your, uh... Like this? Jitter, 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 jitter. <laughs> You'll see it when it catches up. Yeah, 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 like that. Except when you do it right after you blow up an object, it's like oh. your hand is up in the air as if you had just fired the gun, and it's it looks really funny. Maybe I'll show that off later if I can get it to trigger. Yeah, there's like, I do there's it right a fair there, few areas. I have nothing else to do. Yeah, it's fair. This is a marathon run. I ain't looking to set no records today. I already have the record. What do I care? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we are going down into. Uh, it's called the Zohar emulator hanger. It's complicated storyline stuff. Um, what we really need to know is that Gargoyle is through that door, and uh, we don't like Gargoyle. It's a very terrible <laughs> boss. Like, the reason why it sucks for a glitch list is because you use your mechs, and your mechs can't heal mid combat yet, and he does a lot of damage to you, so it's like a DPS race. Who kills who first? Yeah, That's in, in glitch list. In Glitchless, this boss has something like a 50% fail chance through no fault of your own. Yeah. Totally based off of RNG and who Gargoyle attacked with what and when. Yeah, so this is, this is the bottleneck of the run in uh, Glitchless. In any percent, it's just fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's Trankov. He's fine. Don't worry about it. Oh, wait. He's not fine. Oh, that was the wrong attack. <laughs> Accidentally hit square instead of a triangle on Shion. Whoops. Good thing I have the uh, safety saves at least. Just yeah. in case. Because you can still die here. That's why I did the save up top. So his little minions here are part of the reason why this fight is awful. 
Like, they're constantly attacking everybody for a lot, and they can heal the boss. And whenever you kill one of them, the boss gets stronger. So, it's even more reason why this fight is awful on glitch list. But here, yeah, just just blast him, and he's, he's going to go down. Yeah. Come on. Let's go. one more oh darn it i need one more okay if he probably he probably would be on dunzo if i hadn't screwed up um hitting with she on and dunzo there's gargoyle so nice to see him just get body like that? Man, <laughs> just I would love to do that. <laughs> By the way, that was Commander Trankov. So, bye, Commander Trankov. Bye-bye. <laughs> bye-bye. Never gonna see you again. I think. Yeah. This game has a tendency to bring back characters who got uh, bodied earlier in the franchise. <laughs> so, if we have any time for a donation, we have quite a bit of time to donation, because this is another batch of cutscenes. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, I want to remind people that we have uh, on top of the active bid war for changing the lead character, which we already uh, have Ziggy at 150. That was done a little while ago. We also reminder, we have swimsuit percent incentive, which is currently at 299 out of a thousand. And we've only got about probably 40 to 45 more minutes left before uh, we start reaching that point in the run. So we want to meet that. You've, uh, you need to get your donations in to meet that. Uh, we also have another uh, open uh, target incentive uh, for the next run of Octo uh, Octopath Traveler 2, uh, where Sanjan is going to fight the super boss uh, after the run. Uh, and if you all know about Octopath, Octopath Traveler bosses, that's going to be very intriguing. Um, We've got those. And again, when you donate for any of these wonderful incentives, you have a bunch of prizes that you can get. Uh, we've got some perlers from, and iron-on patches from Kingdom Hearts. We have an Octopath Traveler 2 Steam Key, which those require five $10 minimum donations. And then up until now, until the end of the marathon, we've got a $50 minimum donation to get the wonderful, adorable big sphere that is the Sphere jumbo plush uh that you've been seeing throughout the marathon hanging out in the audience so any of any of those donations can go to that if you donate 50 or more for the jumbo plush all right so at the moment um she or momo's feeling sad because junior accidentally uh insulted her father <laughs> in front of her kind of rude of him but to his credit he wasn't aware that this guy was her father um so we had to go make her feel better cosmos actually helped with that for once and now we're gonna go we're gonna go to the beach we're gonna have fun beach time we're gonna see the, i mean if i wasn't skipping the cut scene we would get to see the character swimsuits during the cut scene yeah we get a beach episode let's go and yeah. then well no we skip never mind <laughs> <laughs> You only get to see the you only get to see the swimsuits if we get to that grand. You guys know what to do. Do it. But also donate so I can have Cosmos as the on-screen character. Are are we certain that Xenosaga this portion of Xenosaga is not just like a slice of life anime episode? I mean it could be. Mm -hmm. Where they all go to the beach and hang out. It kind of is for a moment. Oh, wait. I, tr I tried to go to the docks to go to the beach. I forgot I have to go to the residential district first. <laughs> Whoops. The um, So this ship is called the Durandal. Um, it is uh, Junior's flagship. He and his twin brother, yes, they are twins, even though um, his brother is not stunted age. He looks 28. Um they run something called the Kukai Foundation, which is their like nonprofit philanthropist organization that inexplicably has its own uh, space station. We are headed towards there, but um, 
nothing wrong is going to happen when we reach there. Everything's fine. <laughs> yeah, every location we go to for more than a short amount of time is going to basically always have something happen. Oh, I mm -hmm. wonder why we're navigating this area for couldn't couldn't be for some reason later. Yeah. I wonder why. This is another example of hey, you should memorize this layout of this ship because reasons. All right. If you got any more donations, now's the time because we're just going to be running through the Durandal for a little bit to get to um the beach episode. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. While we take our trip over to the beach, uh, we I wanted to give an update. Uh, it looks like we have met the super boss uh, incentive for Octopath Traveler 2. Uh, so thank you very much for donating to that. And we got another $50 towards the swimsuit percent in that time. So now it's at 349 out of 1000. So Woo! We got time. Keep it going, everybody. We we can get to that swimsuit percent, which will be uh, very fun. And yeah, uh, part of that, of the oh, part of yeah. um, swimsuit percent is it's going to force me to do one of the game's super bosses. Since you brought up super bosses, um, I will have to do uh, the super boss called Great Joe when I am severely under level for it. <laughs> so there you go. Do you hear that, everybody? You can get another super boss on top of that if we meet that incentive. So there you go. Uh, and part of uh, part of that was fifty dollars from Lord uh, Azul, that just says, "Hello." Hello. Hello. Konnichiwa. And also, a part of meeting that uh, the Octopath one, we had one thousand dollars from Renfane twenty seven with no comment. But thank you so much. <laughs> And just a reminder, no matter how big or small uh, the incentive is, it is going towards NAMI and it is going to a fantastic cause. Still got more time. All right. And while we have that, I want to remind everybody that RPG Limb Break uh, is grateful to uh, LK, who's a longtime uh, contributor and designer of our promo banners, attendee badges and emotes. And you can check out her work at jazaboo.com. That is J A Z A A B O O.com. And RPG Limit Break is uh, very happy to have the Yeti as a partner again for this marathon. The awesome t-shirts are back for another year, courtesy of the Yeti. That's Y-E-T-E-E. -E -E. And you can go to theyeti.com slash RPGLB. For every shirt that is purchased, $5 will be donated to NAMI directly. Alrighty. So we're just going to very... Oh, I have to switch him into my party. <laughs> Chaos, why are you like this? So we have Ziggy back, but guess what time it is, guys? Oh, I actually exited out of the menu. It is time for pulling the Xenosaga disc out of the PS3. Putting in Fatal Frame 2, because that's the disc that I choose to use. Nice. So it is time for the glitch again. I'm listening yeah, to the so console. Since I know that some people haven't seen this yet or are just tuning in, Basically, the glitch we're doing is you open your main menu and you pop the disc out and it pretty much change. It scrambles all of your upgrade value costs, your cost values. But if you put in another game of the same region, it instead reads those values as zeros. So uh, it means your upgrades for your tech attacks and stuff of that nature are free. So with Junior here, we're going to take his Moonlit Serenade and we're just going to buff the tech level to max which is 50 and it's going to do monster damage and we're going to set the speed to high so that we can use it uh, on turn one and reduce the weight to its minimum so it doesn't reduce his speed and uh yeah this is why we're able to just mow down bosses and enemies and stuff like really easily not me just absolutely whiffing on my <laughs> menu inputs <laughs> okay chaos where are you 
So Chaos, um, I'm just going to upgrade his stuff a little bit. We're not going to go too far. I can't remember what number I need to do, so I'm just going to do 11. Okay. Back to characters. Fatal Frame come out of the PS3. Xenosaga go back into the PS3. And we listen. There it goes. It looks like it's frozen. It's not. Trust me. I know it's scary. And everybody is T-posed. So this thing with upgrading stats, the, the bug still applies where upgrade costs are zeros. But the, the way the stat upgrades work is kind of strange. I still barely understand it to this day. But basically, uh, you can upgrade the stats of any character to match the stats of another character. But that said character, whoever has the max in whatever given stat, they're, they're like the cap. So they can't upgrade their own stat any higher, but other people can spend points to catch up, which is a very strange system, but we're going to use it to our advantage, so everyone's going to more or less have very similar stats, if not basically the same stats. Yeah. One more. So I know I said that uh, chaos isn't really important, but there is going to be one fight that's going to come up fairly shortly where he is the only person in the party. So that's why I'm bothering to actually do any upgrading on him. I probably don't need to do his actual stats, but I'm going to just for safety reasons. Again, yeah, and then I'm going to take this moment to unequip the white ring from Ziggy. That's going to be useful for later. Yeah, the white And ring not because I completely forgot to do it. Yeah, and not because I completely forgot to do it earlier. <laughs> Yeah, agility is a really important stat for combat where it really affects um, starting turn orders and such like that. So uh, you want to be able to at least outspeed many enemies and bosses. And uh, there's this weird uh, mechanic in this game called extracting or extracting skills. Like skills in this game are kind of strange. You have to build up skill points and you... Uh, extract a skill from a piece of equipment using your skill points and when you spend enough skill points you level up your skill level so you can extract higher level skills it's kind of weird but when you when you do this disc removal nonsense it kind of helps us in that instance too so we're, later we're going to be uh extracting agility plus one from that white rings and just putting it on all of our main party members so that everyone is going to be pretty much faster yeah, I usually end up doing it um, in the just before the dungeon after the next one is what I usually end up doing it. Um, we have, let's see here, we have one mandatory usage of the glitch left. Um, ideally two. There is one uh, boss drop we're going to get in the second to last dungeon uh, called the boost power. We want that drop. The thing is, it's the common drop, I believe. From the fight so it's a occasion it's an occasion where you actually don't want the rare drop from a fight yeah um, rare drops in this game are really silly <laughs> like they are. It, it, you if you get the rare drop okay. you do not get the common mm -hmm. drop and there's exactly one instance i ran into where i beat a boss and it's the one that gives you the smg drop in the world mm -hmm. it, he yeah. has a rare drop of nothing and I've gotten the rare drop before and did not get a needed piece of gear I needed for a glitch list and lost the run because yep. I got exceptionally unlucky where his rare slot of nothing gave me actually nothing. So <laughs> it could be pretty silly. Xenosaga glitch list giveth and it taketh away. <laughs> yeah. There's a reason why I mostly run any percent. Any, like, actual any percent. It's definitely more consistent. Yeah. Definitely more marathon safe. <laughs> definitely. Like, holy crap. Okay. So we just went and chilled. We're on a place called the Kukai Foundation, which is the um, the space station that Junior and his brother own that I was talking about earlier. So now we're going back to Durandal. Hopefully I don't uh, forget which area of the Durandal I need. The problem with navigating the Durandal is um, oh, it's the same one like train that goes to every area of the Durandal. And you can very easily accidentally click on the wrong part 
or forget momentarily, you know, which one you need to go to because it is fairly samey looking. Um, and it's about uh, 30 seconds uh, to a minute of time loss each time. Chunky time loss if you're not paying attention pretty much. Yeah. All right, so we're going to go um, do some maintenance on Cosmos, obviously in a cutscene. Oh, right. The um, You may have seen there that Alan asked Shion if she was okay. In the cut in the beach cutscene that we skipped, Shion had a bit of a episode because she is massively afraid of thunder, and Junior was showing off the cool environmental stuff that they'd installed on the spaceship to make it look like a thunderstorm. And she was not okay with that. Of course, to his, again, to his benefit, he did not know. But it's another case of Junior shoving his um, foot firmly in his mouth, which he does constantly. Up to this point, Junior has ruined like three things already. At least. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so all of these cutscenes here, um, we've arrived at Milsho, which is the planet everybody's been trying to get through this entirety of the game. The problem is, the second we got there, we got arrested. Well. We didn't do anything, but we got arrested. Because somebody doctored footage to make it look like the Durandal blew up the Woglinde. So somebody took all of the footage from the Utic Organization ship the Junior attacked, and doctored it to make it look like it blew up the world one day. So we got framed. And now we have to try to uh, clear our name. The problem is there is only one piece of equipment in the entirety of the ship, the foundation and all of it, that apparently has the highest possible security on us. No chance of tampering to get um, untamperable video evidence that says no 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 the well glenday got attacked by gnosis they got attacked by aliens and um it's in cosmos's head yep so <laughs> just like in the tutorial area how we were in her brain or well, we're going back in there but it's going to look completely different yep because um if we hadn't skipped the cutscenes in the intro dungeon you would have seen um Oh, I have to go get the equipment. I forgot to grab it. Whoops. So right, the reason why we had to do um, chaos only during that uh, fight there is because he's... <laughs> Their excuse is because he doesn't have a weapon. Even though Ziggy also doesn't technically have a weapon, he has one weapon that he can use as a special, which I think is the reason why they disabled him for the fight. Um, but yeah, we have to go get our equipment first. So funnily enough, the room I'm about to go into has the super boss that has the swimsuit. So theoretically, I could get the swimsuit right now. However, uh, we would get all of the game overs. <laughs> okay. I haven't fought that super boss in so long. The main thing I remember about him is the funny noise he makes when you hit him. But Boom. I forget how hard he. Yeah, <laughs> I forget how hard he actually is. It's been too long. Okay, I'm gonna get some more of those just in case. So that's the second um, shop that we do. I got the cure-alls because of um, a fight later against a boss called Tiamat, which can cause uh, confuse to your party members. And I'll explain more when we get to that boss, why that is such a big problem in that fight specifically. Um, I got some med kits specifically for, let's see if I can do this dodge. Maybe, maybe, mayhaps. Oh, there's one of them. I'm not going to get the second one. I never get the second one. Yeah, he got me. Um, what was I talking about? <laughs> uh, the med kits? Right. Um, I got the med kits because of the second part of the Kukai Foundation. So in classic Xenosaga fashion, the game made us go take a nap in the Kukai Foundation, which cool. That is their excuse to show you the Kukai Foundation, because obviously the Kukai Foundation is gonna get attacked. Okay, I'm trying to see if I can do this dodge. Oh, no. Oh, this is fine. Yep, this is fine. Okay. So now we're going to go to the dock. Um, These guys but the are problem... surprisingly slow. <laughs> yeah, but the problem about the Kukai Foundation attack specifically is there are enemies that are immune to damage. You kill them by healing them. 
So I stocked up on med kits so we can just throw med kits at them because there is one fight against one of those types of enemies that is actually mandatory. Now, for some reason, this enemy is just a stationary enemy. It's not an actual enemy enemy, but the but the mech was. So you can just walk behind it. <laughs> <laughs> is it okay if I interrupt really quickly? Yes, you we may. We have a development in the bid war. Oh. oh, dear. And the development in the bid war oh, dear. is that Cosmos is now in the lead at $165. Yes. Yes. Let's okay. go. And with that, and with that, the donation I believe that went with that is from Steadiest Rhyme for $100 that says, For our queen! For our queen! Okay. <laughs> now, so... the bad news is that we're going to be in her head, so we can't put her in the party yet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so the, sec the secondary is still Ziggy, right? Uh, Ziggy. Yes. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, Ziggy is still at $150. Yeah. It's not going to really matter um, for this next dungeon. So, because the party is going to get split in half, <laughs> Ziggy's going to be in one party and Xion's going to be in the other party, which I think she's third now. Um, so, thankfully, we will be able to switch to Cosmos. Don't worry about it. We will, we will get our girl back. Uh, we will have to wait. <laughs> This because series they... really likes to take her away from us a lot, and it frustrates me. Yeah, they like to take our queen away. Thankfully, after this dungeon, the game will no longer um, take characters away from you. Just, except for like 30 seconds at one point, but... Oh, no, that's the wrong direction. I think. Yeah, that is the wrong direction. Um, thankfully, after this, everybody will be together no more switching out even during one particular moment when one character shouldn't technically be there she's still in her party but hush hush don't worry about it <laughs> it's totally her Shh. it's fine it's not like we use that character anyway because it's momo so <laughs> all right oh, i love playing this game on the ps3 so much the loading time is so much better yeah. This game Especially this game played on a hard drive even better. Yeah. Yeah. The um actually funny I'll I'll explain that actually cuz that's a really interesting thing. So I am the um any percent world record holder in both English and Japanese for Xenosaga. Um there is something really interesting about the Japanese version. So in Japan in the US too technically for like a couple games but mostly in Japan, the PlayStation 2 Fat, the big models they have um, external hard drives that are OEM. Um, and some games took advantage of those hard drives. Uh, oh, I'm in a cutscene. Um, the games that took advantage of those hard drives have various effects. It depends on the game. Now, interestingly, Xenosaga 1 and only Xenosaga 1 of the franchise and only in Japan is able to be installed on those hard drives. Um, so because of that, only on the Japanese version of this game, if you have the official PlayStation 2 unit, which most of them are called the BB unit in Japan. I'm not going to make that second dodge. Um, you can partially install the game to a hard drive, which significantly improves your load times. And if I hit any of those yellow lights, I get into a fight. So there we go. Um, and it's really, really, it's really interesting to me as somebody who likes tech and I um, have a hobby of refurbishing PlayStations for funsies. Um, but that is also the reason why I have right next to me a fat model launch PS2 from Japan with a BB unit attached to it for this game and this game only. Nice. Though technically, interestingly... Resident Evil Outbreak Files 1 and 2 also work for it. Both in US and in Japan. All right, we are currently in what's called the Encephalon. You saw this at the beginning of the game, but it was a very different area. Uh, the reason why we're in here now, because all they meant to do was just dive into Cosmos's memory banks and get the video footage of the Woglinde attack. However, the second they tried to do that, Everybody in the room mysteriously got pulled into Cosmos's robot brain. They don't know why. That was not supposed to happen. Come on, friend. There we go. Uh, so they don't know why. 
But if you were paying attention at the beginning of the game, you would notice that when you were in the tutorial area, okay, he's behaving. Never mind, no, he's not. Um, Cosmos had a little bit of a glitch happen to her, which caused the encephalon to start to melt down in her brain, and Shion had to get yanked out by Alan, or she was going to die. Because she was like, no, 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 it's fine. I want to get more data. Um, Shion's also not the brightest. Um, is this guy going to behave? Okay. No, he's not. Okay. I'm just getting some bad luck on these guys. These guys have a really weird hitbox, too. Like, their arms are forgiving, but their front and back is, like, huge. Yeah. Though, a saving grace is it doesn't matter who your lead character is, the uh, hitbox for you is the same. Yeah. All right. So we're just running around Cosmos's brain, trying to figure out how to get out of Cosmos's brain. Because we're now we're stuck in Cosmos's brain. <laughs> If I remember right, it's kind of just filled with a lot of memories and locations of the people I got sucked in. Is that, is that how that works? I uh, totally forget. Shion, Shion and Junior specifically. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, darn it. I got stuck on a wall. Um, so the areas that we're going through right now are all based off the specific locations of a um, planet called Milsha. Now, I mentioned Milsha earlier, but that wasn't the actual Milsha. Technically, it's a planet called Second Milsha, which is like decaf Milsha. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, let's see if I can do this dodge. No, rude. <sighs> okay. So both uh, Shion and Junior are... Well, Shion is from Milsha. Junior technically isn't. Um, but about 14 years before the story, before the story of the began back in the day um the planet of old milsha got oh darn it got attacked by the gnosis and it is the first like known big attack by the gnosis it's when the sort of they said hello to the galaxy and then started slowly taking over planets and uh turning everybody into pillars of salt yes that's an actual thing um so you find out that uh, both Junior and Shion were there when the Gnosis attack happened, and they are one of the very, very, oh, I'm going the wrong way, very, very few survivors. And this is sort of them going through their trauma. Oh, come on! <laughs> Man, I'm getting all the bad RNG placement on these guys. Yeah, this whole chapter is one of the next worst places when it comes to, uh, like, dealing with enemies. The cathedral yeah. ship is up there, and this is this whole chapters I have there with it. A lot of obnoxious dodging involved. Yeah. This guy's gonna... Oh, I'm I'm Junior right now. So this is an, um, an instance of the game swapping my uh, lead character. Because um, this section is Junior's area. And the section I was in just a minute ago was Shion's area. So it defaults to them being the leader of the party. Nope, that's wrong way. So we've got time for a few donations if you have them, because we're just running around. Sounds great. While we are traversing uh, Cosmos's brain, uh, we got $51 from Anonymous that says, another super boss, you say? Don't mind if I do. And speaking of uh, that donation right there, want to let you know that we are now 400 out of a thousand for that swimsuit uh percent and that donation was i uh, mentioned scarlet tanger was just mentioning that if we get the swimsuits uh she will have to fight a super boss called that was a great uh great joe did i great get that joe. right it's great joe it's a reference yeah. to um big joe from xeno gears gotcha yeah so we've got that a uh, super boss and we did meet the super boss incentive for Octopath Traveler 2 and a new uh, a new incentive actually just opened up to now not only fight that super boss in Octopath Traveler, but do it blindfolded. Ooh. And in that is $1,500 to 
see that met as well. So you've got a couple great uh, incentives out there. And I know for the swimsuit percent, I think ideally it's somewhere around another 15 to 20 minutes. So we don't have much time uh, before we're going to be reaching that section. So I want to let you know if you want to get that in uh, to see that incentive met the, and see a super boss, uh, you've only got a little bit more time. Yeah, I'm getting angry with this guy. I'm just taking him out. <laughs> <laughs> he was sta he's standing perfectly between two piles of rubble that I can't get around. <laughs> well, and his back's towards me. That's pretty rude. Yeah, it's very rude of him. So you know what? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Fire and Malazor. <laughs> <laughs> The upside, I got two medic uh, medkit DXs, which are going to be very useful later. Well, yeah, those are like guarantee one shot. Those uh, red guys, right? Or the unless you get the right of them. RNG, then they might take two. Yeah, the first phase of them. No, yeah. med um, medic DX will take them. Um, will take at least one phase of them out, um, regardless, because their max HP is three hundred. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, both forms max HP three hundred. Alrighty. Thankfully, we're getting near-ish to the boss. We we're almost there. A few more areas. Oh, we st we still have forest with Shion though. Oh gosh darn it! Give me alone! Dodged. You have been dodged, good sir. Let's see if I can do this. No, I need to get him down here. Oh darn it! He's perfectly in the middle. <laughs> That's uh, some of these something these enemies like doing this run so far, as it seems. Yeah, they usually are not in the direct middle this often. Usually, I'm able to get around these guys fairly consistently. But today, they just don't like me. Okay, is this guy gonna behave? He is. Oh my god! I dodged an enemy. I am shook. Let's go. I dodged another enemy. I'm shook again. <laughs> Xenosaga. Curses. All right. Now we are finished with the um, Ziggy Jr. Momo section. We have just one more section as, um, as Shion and Chaos. Who Chaos is just chilling. <laughs> He's just chilling with her. He doesn't have really anything to do with um, the Milsha stuff. Momo Jr. and Shion do. Mostly Shion and Jr., but are you gonna behave? No, of course not. Please behave. Okay, he's behaving. <laughs> Another thing to know about enemies and dodging them in this game is that a lot of them, or I guess most of them really, have a, uh, I guess like a tether range. There's like a, a the specific range they can run up to before they just immediately turn around and stop carrying. So you can kind of yeah. hide them away to that range, wait for them to stop, and then go around them sometimes. I'm just going to real quick control Xion with my right hand with the left control stick. See if I can get the bunnies back on screen. There we go. Since we just saw Bunny. Bunny being the white bunny in the game, not my bunnies. Okay, let's see if I can... Bro. <laughs> troll being a troll? Troll being a troll. Okay, I got the dodge. Now am I gonna get the second dodge? Nope! Did not. Lissai. Okay, here we go. Yeah, this area of the encephalon is probably the hardest to dodge. Yeah, it's really, really tough. It's a lot of RNG and a lot of just tight pathways. Yeah, tight pathways and some of them are partially obscured like this one here. Oh, come now. Yeah, he's gonna get me. This one, I think I've only managed to dodge once or twice. Yeah, that one's really But that's really what these packs are for. Yeah, that one is an extremely deceptive one because it goes, um, the path you're going down goes down into the left. So it's ex 
pretty much. Oh, I got the glitch. Okay, we're fine. Oh. I got the glitch while he was glued to my backside. Oh, that, that sucks. Yeah, that's fine. I was able to get out of his range before he uh, got into the fight. Which is the only way to break that glitch. Hello, troll. Do me a favor. Thank you. He turned around. How, how kind of him. All right, the game's going to force us to watch Bunny again. There's there's quite a few things that you can do optionally in the game. This is one of them. It's trying to play like trying to play a game with Bunny there. We're not going to do that because that's slow. <laughs> there's no reason to do it. I don't think you do it in Glitchless either, do you? No. No. But if we did, we get to see uh, the other side of Bunny's head. If you know yeah. what's back there. <laughs> you don't want to know what's behind Bunny's head. Behind Bunny's head is is full of horrors. <laughs> <laughs> the the joke there is the rabbit has two faces. The second one is behind his head, and it's like a grumpy old man face, like an actual three D textured grumpy old man face. <laughs> yeah, it looks really Very silly. Okay. So, oh, I need to switch back to Ziggy. Okay, do we have the right party? We do not. Oh no. The game always likes to put chaos in my party for some reason. <laughs> Now, glitchless, I'd be fine with that, but in here, no, he's no. gonna just gonna just gonna be chilling, working on his talents. All right, time for the only real boss that's scary on both uh, glitchless and uh, any percent. Yeah, this boss has some once we get in, uh, very. Once we get into the fight, once we get into the fight, I'm going to focus a bit. Um, so I'll let you explain the fight. Yeah. Once we get there, but I'm gonna save first just in case. Yeah, definitely. I did once um, get to this point, and I completely forgot to buy cure rolls. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, just to make sure they were good. Aha. <clears throat> I think you needed help. All right, here we go. Time for Tiamat. <sighs> yeah, so this boss, you have to specifically set up your party to where you have Junior and Xion in the party or else the fight is impossible. Because you have to kill the boss twice, once with Xion and once with Junior. It doesn't matter when you kill him with who, but just once with one person and again with the other person. So you gotta take his HP down to zero with, say, Xion on the last hit. And then he auto heals himself for like 1500 HP or something like that. And then you have to finish him off with the other character. So. That's that's the main thing you gotta do, but the thing that is, is really annoying about this boss is that after uh, specific character turns, he'll do specific moves. And sometimes after Xion, he'll do Ruined Earth, which is brutal. It's like, hey, Xion went next. All right, I'm just gonna hit y'all for a buttload of damage, no problem. So <laughs> you, you do not want him to go after Xion or counter boost after Xion. It's painful. And then for yeah. Junior, and I like, and I just misclicked twice in a row for my tech attacks. Oh no! <laughs> the movie uses after Junior is relatively harmless, and uh, I think it's after Ziggy where he might consider confusing somebody. I think it is. That's that's also pretty bad for obvious reasons. Characters might attack other characters instead of attacking the boss. So this, this boss is he, he's really obnoxious. Just things he decides to do after character turns and you have to kill him twice. This boss is just, ugh. It's not as bad as, ugh. say, Gargoyle and Glitchless, but this boss still just, ah, uh, could cause some problems. This is fine. Yep, there is a confusion. See, the downside here is because I accidentally misclicked, because sometimes I forget whether or not my tech attack's on triangle or square. Oh, yeah. it's different for different characters. No, no, no. Oh, that's game over. Good thing I saved. Oh, yeah, see? I got two, ru I got two ruined earths. Usually you would get only one in the fight. That's why I saved, by the way. Yeah, ruined earth is totally brutal. That's the mm -hmm. one advantage to Glitchless, is that you'll be in your robot so you can tank multiple of those, but yeah. otherwise, it's this fight's still better on any percent. 
because yeah. your your damage output is so much better and faster. But yeah, that is the squishy. one. That is the one downside of um <clears throat> of any percent. Your glass cannon, the entire game. Yeah. And I gotta remember triangle for Shion, square for the other two. <laughs> Yeah, so I guess uh, the reason why triangle and square matter is that <clears throat> uh, triangle is usually your ranged attack and square is usually your melee. So your tech attacks are also ranged or melee. And Xion's good tech attack that we buffed is ranged. So if you press square first, uh, you're you're no longer in at range attack, you know, setup. So you're going to just use something else that's not spell ray because that's your range attack. Yeah. And I believe... Yeah, Juniors are pretty much always ranged. He doesn't have any melee attacks. Yeah, Junior is the one character who can put all of his tech attacks on um, either square or triangle, regardless of the tech attack. He's the only character who can, and that's because he his weapon is a gun. Yeah, he, so he's all of his attacks are ranged. Yeah, he uses only his guns. Because he is a cowboy. That's, yeah. that's literally his point. <laughs> oh, I misclicked again. <laughs> See, this is the one. Um, this is the one downside of, and there it goes, ruined earth. Uh, nice. Okay, we're fine. This is fine. Everything's fine. Um, what was I saying? <laughs> I got completely distracted by accidentally clicking the wrong button. All oh, right. The problem um, with I'm just going to take this chance to uh, heal Xion because she needs it. Um. Yeah, because of the fact that you are a glass cannon, if at any... And I did it again! Um, oh, no. If at any point you misclick... Oof. Oh, this is bad. I might I might get a game over again. No, I got a double ruined earth! What? Oh, this... oh I hate this fight. <laughs> what? That is, that is rude, man. What, what, oh, what, a, what a boss. Even even when I'm doing regular runs, I always say before this fight, because guess what? You can lose this fight and still get world record sometimes. <laughs> That's how much of a pain Tiamat is. Okay, third time's the charm. Shion is on triangle, the other two are on square. Because, um, you know, speedrun muscle memory? Since the other two characters are on square, if I just hit square for them, I might accidentally fat finger it with Shion, and once you hit it once, you can't back out because she's already started the attack sequence. Yeah, speedrun muscle memory is hard to break. <laughs> and in this yeah. situation, you need to be able to differentiate them, but you're just like, I want to press square, dang it. Just, <laughs> yeah. Right? You gotta not. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard. Yeah, and because for Shion specifically, he counters with Ruined Earth, and because I'm a glass cannon, triangle circle because i'm a glass cannon um extra punishing extra punishing is she not gonna die she might i have revive so i can revive her but oh three health <laughs> three health let's go <laughs> So just for safety Not even reasons, close. just for safety reasons, I'm gonna waste a junior turn to revive um, Ziggy, because Ziggy got down, but Shion didn't. Do not hit Shion. Do not hit Shion. Do not, bro. <laughs> nice. Sigh. This this boss knows that we're in a marathon run right now. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm getting a double one. Game, why are you like this? Do I risk it? Yeah, I risk it. Whew. This is fine. Okay. Five. Oh, the miss. <laughs> yeah, that miss came in clutch. Okay. So this is going to be enough to take out the junior section of the fight. Now we just have to survive long enough for Xion to get off a spell ray.
because he auto healed himself in one spell ray, even if it doesn't crit, should be enough to take out the boss. Thankfully, it, it confused Junior. <laughs> oh. It's also worth noting that you don't want to kill him with the same character twice because then he'll auto heal and just put you back in square one. Yeah. Oh, bye, Junior. I do not care anymore. Junior, you can stay down. <laughs> Now, that won't get in the way of learning Storm Waltz, will it? It will. Uh oh. But it's fine. Well, we got but through this got... boss. <laughs> oh my god. We got meteor shots on um, Ziggy, and we're going to have X Buster on Cosmo, so it's going to make up for it. Nice. Um, and ideally, we'll be able to get uh, Storm Waltz on, Z on Ziggy, on Junior, after um, Rianonce, if I get boost power. <laughs> All right, so we've got time for some donations after that brutal boss fight. Gosh, I hate that fight. Because we're just going hey, to- At least you got a third- yeah, I mean, you got third time was indeed the charm uh, on that one. Um, so I want to remind everybody that upcoming very shortly, uh, we're going to be reaching the point for swimsuit percent, and we still need $600. We're still 400 out of 1,000 for that one. So we're getting close to closing time on that one. So make sure to, uh, if you want to see that and see uh, Scarlet Tanager, fight a super boss because of having the swimsuit uh, costumes on uh, make sure to put those donations in here very shortly and also reminder too that when you donate for these if you do a minimum of five dollars uh, from now until the end of the marathon uh, you can get some iron-on patches some perlers uh, if you $10 minimum, you can get an Octopath Traveler to Steam Key. And for the $50 minimum donation, we uh, or you can possibly get the Jumbo Plush of Steel that has been hanging out in the audience all week. And as all of these accumulate up over the marathon, if you do $100, you can uh, qualify yourself for the 256 gigabyte Steam Deck as well. So all of these donations that you will get in, um, will go towards uh, possibly getting those prizes and you can put it towards uh, the swimsuit percent incentive as well. Yeah, we only have, by the way, chat, we only have like five minutes. Um, because what we're doing right now is we're going to go find Alan because uh, Shion yelled at Alan and now feels bad about it. And she's gonna go find Alan to apologize but when she finds Alan, Alan's gonna be like, no, it's fine, it's just, he's, do, he's doing weights with some dude over on the foundation, and she, on for some reason, gets angry at him for not being sad that she... <laughs> their relationship is so toxic in this series. And she, Alan is way too good, way too good for her. Yeah, like, <laughs> she, she, on, she on does not deserve Alan. <laughs> he, he's such, he's such a good boy. But. Yeah, once we get Alan, um, talk to Alan, we're going to be going back to the uh, Durandal. And once we do that, the Kukai Foundation is going to get attacked. And as soon as I go to the um, attack area, which is where we would be getting the first swimsuit, that's when the um, incentive ends. So we only have a couple minutes. So if anybody's got a big donation coming in, now's the time to do it. Because trust me, you want to see these swimsuits. They look ridiculous. So isn't Alan just Alan... over there to the right, kind of yeah. trying to flex? <laughs> yeah, trying to flex. If you talk to the uh, actual bodybuilder, he does say Alan has muscle, so he's not as scrawny as he looks. Oh, okay. <laughs> he just doesn't have much of it. <laughs> okay, now it's time to skip some of the cutscenes that are our, um, censored in the US version. <clears throat> I think that one with Albedo was one of the censored ones. Can't remember which ones are or not. I know that they're all the same area in reference to that specific character that got censored. Yeah, uh, Albedo does uh, some things 
and they kind of change it up between what they do in English and Japanese. And on top of it, for English, they censor some of it too, which is kind of yeah, silly looking. It's this game and those specific cutscenes um, with Albedo towards the end of the game are actually actually I think I have Cosmos in the party right now. Um, Shion, go away. We don't need you. We got our girl. Yes. Battle party gets. Okay. What was I talking about? <laughs> I was distracted by the can, uh, can on my screen. I, sorry to interrupt. Can I interject yeah. really quickly? Yeah. All right. We just got a five hundred dollar donation from Anonymous that says, hey, "Come uh, on, chat. We can do it. Let's see those swimsuits." <laughs> oh, we are oh. at nine hundred. We are at nine hundred out of a thousand now. So we only need a hundred. Oh, uh, dollars, and we've only got a couple minutes here, chat. So, let's let's see it. Let's see it. Because I'm going there now. There's going to be um, once I get into the area, we are going to have to do one more, one more glitch, um, session. After that glitch section is when I would get the first swimsuit. So it's coming up. If y'all want to see them swimsuits, now's the time. Especially because I have Junior in the party, so I can automatically equip him with the first swimsuit. And the second swimsuit we'll get after the Song of Nephilim. For safety reasons. Let's give a tease for that. Which one is your favorite swimsuit? Um, sadly, this is the, of the three Xenosaga games, this is the only one you can't put Cosmos or Ziggy in a swimsuit. My favorite swimsuit is Ziggy in Xenosaga 3. That <laughs> um, one is hilarious. Because he has a snorkel and goggles. <laughs> and Xenosaga 3 lets you have swimsuits on during cutscenes. All right, if anybody's got a chance, like, now's the time, because I'm doing the f um, possibly the final glitch. Well, I've got an update. We oh. are have met it. it. It is showing as a yeah. thousand out of a thousand. So we are going Let's to be go. getting those swimsuits. Woo! And a super okay. boss. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you so much, everybody. And I believe that came from a hundred dollars from uh, from BD with no comment. But thank you so much for helping us reach that in incentive. Thank you so much, chat. All righty, then. That's going to be great. This is the perfect time, too, because this is my uh, depending on if we get the boost power from the other boss, the last chance for me to upgrade a tech attack. And we're going to have to upgrade something on chaos. <laughs> Because it is going to be, we are going to use chaos for that fight. Um, Interesting. Yeah, it's because um, of his. It's because of Great Joe's resistances. In in my testing, I found that he likes spirit attacks the least, and all of Junior's or all of Chaos's attacks are spirit. <laughs> okay. So we are having actually, you know what? For safety reasons, we're going to do our drill too. Because our battle party for Great Joe is going to be um, Junior, Chaos, and um, Cosmos. And our battle party for the rest of the game, after that, cha Chaos, um, Cosmos, Junior, Shion. So you're going to get to see those two in their swimsuits. Nice. It also means we're going to go a little bit over estimate because it does take a little bit to get them. <laughs> I want to see the fight. If I if I can get the fight of, on first Joe and the first try, or first Joe, great Joe on the first try. Um, oh, that is the wrong button. There we go set things properly. If I get it on the first try, then it's fine. But there is a chance. Yeah, we don't have it yet for him. Okay. Um, then there is a save just before it. It's hard it's hard to do this glitch and do the menuing properly while talking. But there is a save point just before Great Joe, so I will be able to save in case I die to the boss. Because it is very likely it will take me a try or two to take out Great Joe, even when we're overpowered, if I don't get boost power from a boss on the Song of Nephilim dungeon. Which, it has happened. It's happened to me once. In all of the times I've run this game, it's only ever happened to me once. Just don't get the rare drop. It's easy. Yeah. <laughs> easy peasy. Just don't get good luck. We want bad luck. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to use Lunar Seal. Riveting gameplay. <laughs> I love menuing. 
Although this is not my kind of menuing. This is a uh, press circle a lot. Yeah, this is button mash circle until I can't feel my wrist. <laughs> it's the circle of life. <laughs> that one's set, that one's set, that one's set, that one's set. Oh, Shion, I almost forgot Shion. Why does Spell Race look like I can still upgrade it? Did I not go all the way to 50? <laughs> okay, we're upgrading Thermal Blast here, specifically um, as a backup for a character later. Since we're going to be having Shion in the final dungeons instead of Ziggy. Um, most likely, unless somebody donates enough to make it Ziggy in charge again, then I'm going to have to swap out Cosmos. Which, by the way, um, from this point onward, if... Um, once we get to the final dungeon, once we get to the final dungeon, um, if at any point Ziggy takes over from from Cosmos, then I'm going to have to remove her from the party. I'm gonna to have to remove Cosmos. No. Yep. Wrong button. I'm focusing to make sure that I'm doing this as optimally as possible. Because I'm also setting myself up for backups. Do we have some time for some more donations? Yes, we do. All right. We have $100 from a great name right here. Username underscore equals underscore pants. <laughs> um, <laughs> I I don't know what any of this is, and I'm hecking if I'm hecking scared. But let's see the super boss, or at least that's what I was going to say. Then someone beat me to it. So let's see the oct octopath super boss too. Thank you very much, username. And we also have uh, fifty dollars from Mecha Link and $25 from No Fate with no comment. But thank you all so much for your donations. And finally, a very important one, public service announcement of $25 from Ravis that just says bunnies. <laughs> Everybody loves the bunnies. You can see them cuddling in my webcam. Okay. Now what we're doing is we are just making sure everybody is as powerful and defended as possible. Because remember, we have intro equipment <laughs> still. So all of our stat upgrading is going to be coming from this screen. Now theoretically, for safety while you're learning the run, you can go to the shops and get some items at certain points, especially if you're doing things like Great Joe. Um, but that's slow, so. We've got time for another donation while I finish this up. Okay, sounds good. I just want to talk about some of the upcoming, uh, since we bet everything for the Xenosaga run, I want to talk about some of the upcoming incentives and bid wars that we have for the next run, which is Octopath Traveler 2. And that is going to be run by Zero, uh, 1337 and Quadriceps. We've got, obviously, we've met the super boss incentive, but now we have a, a newer incentive, of a to uh, which is 150 out of 1500 for doing the super boss blindfolded. And on top of that, for some bid wars, you can choose not only the boat color, but you can also choose the boat symbol as well. So lots of customization options there. And finally, you can also choose the voice language between English and Japanese that they were going to be running. So lots of options there that we still have open for the Octopath Traveler to run. So from this point on, outside of Great Joe, um, the fight, the, the game's cake. <laughs> With maybe one or two exceptions on the Song of Nephilim, if I don't get this um, item we're talking about from one of the bosses, then things get a bit more difficult, but I'm doing like 3,000 damage when I really should be doing maybe 500. <laughs> okay, 
one. Yeah, we're currently OP. Yeah, we're currently very OP. Two. So the point of this area is the Kukai Foundation's um, uh, ship, not the ship, the space station is under attack by Gnosis. And they don't know why. Like, where did they come from? Why are they here? What's bringing them here? Oh no. We'll find out shortly. Don't worry about it. So we have to go rescue all the civilians and also swimsuit. Let's go. Let's go. Swimsuit, let's go. Okay, Junior. It's time. Did it equip? It did equip. Okay. For some reason, it doesn't show up in the um, character screen. Oh, is it battle only? Yeah, I think it's, it's battle only. Oh. Sadly. In Zeno Saga 3, there is um, swimsuit mode for the cutscenes, but. <laughs> Yeah, and they walk around in the overworld with the swimsuits on as well, which is nice. Oh, they, oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. In the run, though, I believe we only get Jin's, and his is like, kind of, it's like a robe. So. Yeah, because in the, um, in Xenosaga 2 and 3, the um, swimsuits are per character, so there's specific items you have to get for specific characters. In Xenosaga 1, it's just a generic swimsuit that um, changes based off of who it's equipped to. And of course, you want bet, Cosmosis I... is like one of the most time-consuming ones to get. No yeah, surprise. and she doesn't have one in one. Okay. Yeah, Ziggy and Cosmos are the only two that don't have um, swimsuits in the first game. They have them in the second game and the third game. But, interestingly enough, Cosmos does have an optional costume in this game. Just not in this version. Uh, can you not, Troll? Apparently he will. Um, in the Japanese Reloaded Edition, which is a weird version of the game that is exclusive only to Japan, but for some reason it has English um, voice acting. Let's see here. Oh, I don't have a cram. Never mind. Um, I forgot that he didn't have uh, Stormwalt yet. <laughs> oh, rip. Um, but in the Japanese Reloaded Edition, which for some reason has English voice acting using a different script than the US version of the game. And uses an earlier script in some of the earlier voice recording lines. So some of the lines are actually different in this version. Um, in that version of the game, there is two items. There is the Archetype Cosmos and there is the Kirschwasser Momo. Those are two optional um, equipable items that change their appearance to either the Archetype Cosmos or the Kirschwasser for Momo, which I don't think we really see Kirschwassers in the speedrun because we skip all the cutscenes that they're in, but they're essentially the Momo's prototypes. Also, the archetypes, sadly, we don't get to see at all during the speedrun because one, this is the English version, and two, the cutscene that the archetype appears in, we skip, even though it's a pretty metal cutscene. Yeah, that, that cutscene is pretty wild. You, you see Cosmos in this strange looking form that doesn't at all resemble this one other than just having long hair and you see her head spin around and stuff and she's killing people like, oh God. <laughs> yeah, um, the storyline explanation for it is um, a few years, I think it is, before uh, the game, the previous version of Cosmos, so her archetype, um, got activated early before she was ready to be activated and um, kind of went on a killing spree because her identify friend foe system wasn't working properly and was identifying everyone as foes. And it actually does show you the cutscene of her going going crazy. And it does, her, her head does a complete 360. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and then uh, she gets her head blown off, which is... Just an icing on the cake of the whole disturbing nonsense going on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Also, Xion blows her head off. <laughs> yeah, Xion's the one to do it, yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's why in the very beginning of the game, if you listen to the cutscenes, which obviously it's a speedrun, we are not. Um, Xion talks a lot about not wanting, you know, not wanting her to wake up and let's wait till she's ready, etc., etc. And why everybody in the game on the Glinde section starts freaking out when Cosmo starts operating or booting herself up on her own. It's like, oh no, everyone's going, it's going to be a repeat of two years ago, I think it was. Um, 
Thankfully that doesn't happen and she's fine. Okay, let's see if I can get this dodge. Come on, are you gonna? Fine. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of dodges in this section of the game that are just really obtuse. Like there's yeah. some of them that seem like they don't seem possible to dodge at all, but there's like some really weird manipulations you can do to make them doable, but they're just, yeah, they're so weird and very, very tight. I'm gonna get him again. This one is speci um, specifically, you need to try. And um, also there's Junior in his uh, little, in his swim trunks. Um, you have to try and finagle it to where the enemy aggro's on you and then immediately stops in order to sort of trick the enemy. He's not gonna, okay. I gotta show you here. You trick the enemy to get him to go over here and then you get him, get him again. <laughs> Um, to sort of move the enemy just a little bit further south in order to slip past them. Because in the position they... <laughs> yeah, in the position they are in initially, it's impossible to... pretty much impossible to slip past them. So you have to uh, sort of pull him to the side. He's sitting on top of me. <laughs> How rude! I'm definitely going to end up getting into the fight again. Yeah, there we go. If you talk to the NPC while you're still in iframes, you'll look kind of transparent, and I believe they still last after the uh, interaction, and I think you can use that to slip by. Yeah, but it's only for like a half second, and half of the time you come out of the iframes during the cutscene, because it does, you do lose them during the cutscene sometimes. Yeah, it, sometimes you do keep it, and it looks really funny, because you're just sitting there talking to a person while you're like... Transparent. <laughs> yeah, you basically look like a ghost. Okay, I'm not even going to bother trying to dodge this next one. Because I've literally never managed this dodge. <laughs> it's really obnoxious. You gotta hope he goes to the right, and then you use the gap by the stairs that are on fire, and then you have to hope he goes over you so you can go to the right. It's ugh. yeah. It's literally just I don't I don't need that I don't need that in my life right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, sounds about right. <laughs> Is it though, Junior? Is it gonna be fun? I don't think so. I think we're running away. Alrighty. So now the next pair of NPCs we have to rescue is this guy. All you have to do is talk to him. For some reason, just talking to people is um, marks them as rescued, even though they're still aliens all over. Like. It's not like you're escorting them to the exit. So that guy just told us to go save his kitty cat. So we're going to go save the kitty cat. This save is going to be cat. the... Let's save the cat. This is going to be the only instance in the game of when we are forced to take fight against um, these red cloaked enemies. These red cloaked enemies are the ones that are immune to regular damage. So it is actually... Nah, I'm going to risk it. I think I got the bad RNG because usually when I get three... Oh, Darn it. Uh, yeah, I got the bad RNG. Yeah, the bad pattern. Yeah. Bad pattern is when you get three of them because pretty much every time you get three of them on screen like this, they have max HP. These enemies can have um, 50, 150, or 300 HP, and they have two forms and you have to kill both of them. Which is yeah, you take out the red guy by healing it, and then he uh, counter boosts instantly and transforms into that weird floaty mask looking thing, and you gotta do the same yep. thing. Yep. So this fight's just kind of a a little bit of a chore because you got to keep healing all these guys with your items. Yep. Which means, sadly, we can't take advantage of the fact that I'm overpowered because I can't use regular attacks. <laughs> yeah, and it gets even worse if one of your party members gets confused and it ends up being one of the longer fights in the game if you're unlucky. Yeah. Thankfully, I have extra cure all, so there's that. You know what? For safe just because I'm this guy boosted, I'm just gonna throw a meta X or DX at him. Because <laughs> I didn't want to deal with whatever he was gonna pull out. <laughs> yeah. Thankfully, the medkit DXs instant kill them because it does 300, which is the max damage they can have. Sadly, I used one just to force the other guy to transfigure, so we don't have any left. I actually find this fight more annoying than Tiamat. <laughs> even, though it's, even though it's safer than Tiamat, I find it more annoying. Da, da, 
Alright, we found the kitty! Yay, kitty! And the kitty counts as a whole person. For terms of the rescue counter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're just going down here for just a minute. Oh, right, there's a wall there. Talk to this lady, get her to skedaddle. She tells us to go look for her son. Now we gotta go find her son. He's hiding in a wall. Now let's hope I get good RNG dodging this next enemy. I've gotten this enemy <laughs> catching me in the wall, and I ended up getting into the fight three times before I could dodge it. Wow. Yeah, I got into the fight. Wait, did you Sorry. did you say that the it's they're in the wall? Um, got me forced like partially into the wall. So um, I was like ah. jumped between it and the wall with it half glitched into Cosmos's body. So I had to do the fight like three times before the thing actually let me go past. This wall here, it got me shoved into the wall. <laughs> so you left the little boy on, there's a little alcove there and the enemy shoved me into it. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. One more, there we go. Yeah, the enemies in this game can be very rude sometimes. All right, we have two more to grab, I think. So yeah, you can dodge this ghost. You can dodge this enemy in here, this Gnosis. I'm not going to, there's no point. It, the dodge is... You've really? gotta it's like manipulate it two different directions and then run yeah. past it in a really it's it's, it's stupid. <laughs> or you can just have Cosmos fire lasers from her stomach. Yeah. <laughs> Charging. So earlier in the run we lowered a ladder that was attached to this building so you can climb up and access a ramp right away. Or I, I forget mm -hmm. exactly why you go up the ladder, but it changes the route through this entire place entirely. It's the fast it's, it's uh, faster. It's significantly yeah. faster than going the other way. Yeah, the way it used to be done, uh, it took you through a mini hallway that's right next to us that has a troll in it taking up the entire hallway, making him undodgeable. But there was a way that I found a long time ago how to like clip through him. Like you, oh, would, just, <laughs> you would just like <laughs> encounter him and then escape. And then you have to wait for him to encounter you again, but without an alert. So like he has to turn yeah. around right into you and then like you run forward He's running downward, and then you just clip through him. It was so obnoxious. I'm just. I've only managed it once. Yeah. It... So on any percent, I tend to just go. You know what? <laughs> yeah. Just, just screw that. Like, just lower the ladder down, and then just go with this faster route. It's better anyway. Yeah. Oh no, no, I meant on the um the sec the second dodge just there. I'm just like, no, you know what? He just gets stomach lasers. Oh yeah, that guy. Yeah, might as well. guy hiding in a box. <laughs> we just dropped a bunch of boxes on his head. He's fine. Okay, let's see if I can get the back dodge. Oh, okay, I got him. And this guy, we're gonna... Oh, darn it. He was facing the exact wrong direction. Usually if you take a wide berth there, um, you can get past him without... He, he'll aggro on you, but he can't catch you. Usually. Yeah. I think that's the first time I've ever gotten caught by that guy while just doing the wiper. Okay, we're just going to talk to this dude who's pretending to be uh, part of the statue here, and that's how he's surviving somehow. Because <laughs> apparently the gnosis are not that bright. <laughs> Excuse you. Friend. There we go. Cool, fine. All right, that should be the last one, unless I forgot one of them. <laughs> Which I hope not. I think you have everybody. Yeah, I got everyone. And then this boss over oh, here makes a really loud noise. Yeah, good RNG. 
Good RNG. Good RNG. <laughs> you can get this. You can kill this enemy before you get a single turn if you get good RNG. Nope, I got bad RNG. <laughs> Rip. Yeah, if you get um, good RNG and all of your characters can get an attack before he gets his first attack, then he won't split himself in half. <laughs> but it doesn't really do much because you still take him out very quickly. Because our characters are way too strong. <laughs> Then. There's not much noteworthy about this boss other than just he splits up and both versions of him have like different weakness elements, resistances, whatever, and different move sets, but I got Storm Waltz. <laughs> yeah, we just Womp Womp. Yep, Dunzo. Alright. So there's still Gnosis everywhere, but we've managed to evacuate most people. Shion is getting going back to Durandal, but Momo's like, I want to stay behind to help people. Shion goes, okay, sure, and just leaves the person that we know for a fact is has very important data in her brain alone in the middle of a combat area when we know people are after her. So what happens? She immediately gets kidnapped. So you immediately turn back around, go back to the Kukai Foundation, realize she's gone. Then we have to do a rescue mission. Come on, Shion, what are you doing? <laughs> like, yes, let's leave the person we are not supposed to be leaving anywhere. We're supposed to be protecting this lady. Nope, let's just leave her to help people. It's not like we have anything better to do. Like, not getting kidnapped. I think I'm just Shion right now. Oh no, I'm not. This is another case of when the game decides what my characters are. <laughs> we get to be the blue beauty. Also, what's interesting is depending on who your lead character is, um, it actually changes reactions during some like mini cutscenes. Like if you had been Shion there, she would have said something like, oh no, where's Momo? But if you're Cosmos, She's like, I have no readings of the 100 series observational unit. She is not here. Because <laughs> she's a robot. All right. So now we know Momo is missing. So we're like, maybe she went to the residential area of the Durandal, which is where they're sending all of the refugees. She's not going to be there either. And they're going to realize very quickly where she's at. When uh, I hope you guys like droning. As in, uh, <laughs> we're going to be hearing a lot of that in a second here. <laughs> song of Nephilim, the most sleep inducing song in this game. In my current great. state, that's not a good song for me to hear. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> we're all sleep deprived here and we get to see the song that puts you to sleep. Oh no. Also, there's some strawberry jam on the floor. Don't worry about it. Spills happen, man. Yep. Somebody was doing some canning of strawberry jam and they just dropped a pot. <laughs> All right. Momo's fine. Don't worry about her on the floor there. <laughs> um, you have to see for half a second during the cutscene skip. So what happened there is, there is this big spaceship called the Song of Nephilim. That can emit a signal that's called the Song of Nephilim um, that draws Gnosis from all over to one location. Um, the Federation, the uh, government, thinks that they're going to the Kukai Foundation, they think that's what's drawing it. So they actually turned all of their cannons on us and we're like, okay, I guess we have to blow this up now. Um, but that's when 
they manage to figure out, oh no, it's not coming from there. It's coming from this spaceship that suddenly just appeared. So now we have to go infiltrate that spaceship because Junior recognizes it immediately, immediately knows that it's his twin brother, Albedo, and is like, okay, I know where Momo is. <laughs> All right, and again, it replaced my party. Very rude. But you just have to have chaos in your party, don't you know? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> chaos is later. No, because we are going to get the second swimsuit and we're going to switch over to Shion being in the party um, after Song of Nephilim. Though, actually, hmm, hmm, thinking. Actually, no, I'm gonna switch over so Shion's in the party now. Yeah, I'm gonna switch Z Ziggy out. Just for um, XP reasons. Yeah. I had to think about that because I'm so used to taking the party of Cosmos, Ziggy, and Junior. I'm not used to taking Xion. Please enter your destination. We are going to the dock. So if you've been wondering where the Elsa is, since we haven't been around there for a while, we've just been running around the Kukai Foundation, that's where we're going. Since we can't take the Durandal through all of the battles and stuff, since it's currently docked in the uh, spaceship or the space station, we're going to be taking the much faster, very much more able to weave through Gnosis and combat little Elsa. N not from Frozen. <laughs> Different Elsa. All right. Also, sadly, we don't get to see much of the crew of the Elsa, even though they are probably some of the best uh, comic relief in the franchise. Um, especially Captain Matthews here with his uh, red hat. Yeah, and uh, calling everyone a moron. Yeah, he, he calls everyone a moron constantly. He's kicking his employees in the head because he's in like a little elevated platform most of the time. Well, one specifically. He only kicks Hammer in the head because Hammer happens to be sitting directly in front of him. Um, his hat says, caution, I'm a boozer on it. He's supposed to be your like stereotypical trucker type guy. Because these this the entire crew of the ship are supposed to be like space truckers all right so we are now on the song of nephilim you kind of want to explain the primary conceit of this dungeon yeah so this dungeon uh well first of all we finally have some uh music going on it's not exactly the most pleasant kind of song but we have something but uh we're mainly going to be going through three different towers that each have their own puzzles and obstacles in it. And one of them has a boss in there that we're going to be fighting. And we want the one specific drop from it called the boost pack. And that's the common drop. So if we somehow get super unlucky and not get that's going to be sad. But we'll get there when we get there. So yeah. in each tower, we're going to be activating a switch. And it kind of lights up a uh, color on top of it that will lead to a... Uh, central elevator being unlocked so we can go down to fight another boss and if you pay attention the colors on the top of each tower line up to be kind of like the triforce from zelda basically <laughs> something i noticed but uh, yeah. this elevator puzzle is kind of strange where uh the height that the elevator travels up to is dependent on the boxes you destroy and some of them are kind of stacked some of them are like l-shaped or something so if you want to go to a specific floor, you got to destroy very specific boxes. Also, the areas in this um, place are the, the corridors are razor thin. <laughs> yeah, that that spider bot right there is one of the hardest dodges in the game. I haven't been able to do it. I've seen like two people do it, and I'm just like, how did you do that? I, 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 I don't get it. But I've done it once. Just... I also think did, I also think I might have gone to the no, I did go to the right level. Okay. Um, what I was doing before on the elevator, there's all those boxes on it. Depending on how many boxes you destroy in increments of three dictates which level you go on to. We need to destroy six to get to the switch, and then we need to destroy fifteen to get to the exit. And now you're gonna see the first 
tower activate, which is going to connect the bridge to the next tower, which is where that boss is. So fingers crossed we get the boost power from it. It's the common drop. We should get it. Should. Uh, should being the operative word. Yeah. Because if we get the boost power, the rest of this game is just cake. <laughs> just yeah. absolute cake. <laughs> yeah, what that item does, it's... it's uh... It, you can extract the skill from it to give to everybody where everyone starts with one bo one boost. And uh, I know I explained the boost mechanic earlier, but there was really no reason to really use it yet because it just, the opportunity just never Yeah, I think out. I used it, I used it once during Tiamat. Yeah, once, like, but with the uh, skill, everyone will always start with one boost, which is going to be very useful. So pretty much you'll have your main party attack and then you got like one boost on everybody, so you can just force your whole party to go again, whether they're going to be coming up next or not, and just yeah. just wail on enemies and bosses with your extra turns. So yeah. if we get that item, that'll be super useful. It'd be nice. <laughs> now watch us not get it. Marathon luck. Yeah. The way I always remember is uh, you hit six, so you hit the one that I know is four boxes worth and one that's two. And then the second time, just hit all of them until you have three singles left. <laughs> that's how I remember it. That's one way to do it, yeah. I forgot what even I did, but as long as there's three everyone's singles, got their, good. Everyone's got their own method of remembering. Yeah. All right, time for Tower 2, which is just going to be a lot of dodging, because the point is to get from the top of Tower 2 to the bottom of Tower 2, getting the least amount of fights possible. I've managed to do it without a single fight, <laughs> it's but a little tricky. it's very tricky, even though the fights are decently forgiving. Now, just for safety reasons, even though I have enough cure-alls for the fight, I'm going to save anyway. And the dodge is coming up pretty much. Uh, the, the ladders are your best friend because even yeah. if the enemies touch you while you're on a ladder, they're just like, oh, well, where'd she go? I'm, I'm, I'm where'd still she going. go? <laughs> She's invisible. I can't see ladders. <laughs> no. Okay, this guy, we're just gonna. Uh, I did that a little late. That's fine. Whoop. He sees nothing. So do you want to explain, while I'm doing these dodges, do you want to explain the song of Nephilim, like the actual song and why all these guys are attacking me? Uh, I'm trying to remember. My my memory's a little foggy on this one. It's just the song that's being played just does things to like people's minds. It just drives them insane. Like, uh, oh, <laughs> ladders are your best friend. Oh. Oh, Ladders are your best friend. Rock in a hard place. Oh no. <laughs> Definitely rock on a hard place. Okay, we got it. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the, this structure, this ship just plays audio over a wide range that just messes with people and it drives them insane. Like uh, an example is um, all of uh, Junior's relatives. They're uh, all very similar to each other. They're all made the same way. Yeah, made. They're not made naturally uh there's a scene where like they're all just going crazy all of them are just destroying things because i guess th this song it, that it gets produced from this ship just can do that it's weird but uh, there's more yeah, details it, to it it's just it completely <laughs> slips my mind right now but that's like the gist of it good enough um i almost forgot to go to the center first so i can't remember there's an enemy here okay so um tldr the Song of Nephilim is um, wibbly wobbly mumbo jumbo that causes anybody who has a um, synthetic mind, synthetic organic mind, to go absolutely insane. Um, with one note, with like one slash two notable exceptions. Um, I say synthetic organic mind. Because it causes, oh no, he's gonna get me. Oh, yep, I got caught in the wall. Um, usually I'm able to dodge that guy really easily. But um, what that means is anyone who is a realian or a synthetic human, not an android, a realian goes insane and attacks everything around it. 
all of these guys in the uh, wet in the red suits are what's called combat realians, which is why they're attacking me because the song is driving them insane. Now we have a realian in our party. Momo is a realian, but she's fine because she is a super special magical schoolgirl, and she is immune to it. Yeah, people in the story pretty... are chasing her for a reason. Yeah, they're chasing her because she has GPS coordinates in her brain. I'm not even joking, that's the reason. <laughs> yeah, pretty she has, much. She has super special GPS coordinates in her brain. <laughs> so why did And everybody everybody wants to get to where those GPS coordinates go. Alright, here we go. Time for Rianonse. Crossing my fingers. This boss is so annoying on glitchless at least, because you'll constantly drain your HP using a move that kind of drains a percentage of your max HP. Yeah. And uh, in your max, you have a lot of HP, so he restores a lot. But since you're on foot, it's not going to be very much. And since we hit like a truck, yeah, this should, this fight should be better than it is on Glitchless. Yeah. And we're going to be praying for that boost pack drop. We shouldn't have to pray, but I mean, it's, it's marathon luck. You don't know what's really going to happen. <laughs> don't jinx it. <laughs> Also, you can't use square attacks, so we're not going to have the same problem I have with Tiamat. Because um, square attacks can only be used um, if an enemy is on the ground and this boss is not. Yeah, flying boss exclusive, exclusively uh, only attacked by range. So that's one and done. <laughs> oh, you're so overpowered. Granted, I'm definitely going to get humbled when we get to Great Joe. Because Great Joe, even on any percent, is oh, so hard. You know, that it'll fight probably... I've not seen in a speedrun setting, so I'm interested. Yeah, it'll probably, it'll probably take a couple tries. I am. Oh, I got the boost pack. Cool. In there. Yep. That makes everything significantly easier. Okay. So I'm going to remove Xenosaga. This is the last iteration of the glitch. Alright, I'm listening to the PS3. <laughs> Now, since I'm here, um, since Junior died during Tiamat, we didn't um, get the Storm Waltz ability. We want to make sure that he has it. Um, if you want to have as many characters in the end game, having attack all tech attacks as possible because it just makes the end game so much easier. So if you've got any donations, now's the time to let us have them while I'm doing this. Because there's not much to talk about while I'm doing this. We've done it like we've explained it four times now. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> Sounds great. All right. We have $15 from Sarisa Senshi that says, Thank you, RPG Limit Break, for the entertaining week and contributions to NAMI. Your event was a blast, and your support for mental health is truly inspiring. Grateful to be a part of this community making a difference. Keep up the fantastic work. And. I just want to uh, bring back up some of the incentives that are going to be coming up. In addition, not only are we going to be fighting the super boss for sure in Octopath Traveler 2, but there is a really cool new additional incentive that opened up a little while ago where Sanjan is going to now have to do it blindfolded. And right now it's at 155 out of $1,500. And that happens after the Octopath run. So that's a really cool one. And there's also some bid wars as well for the boat color and symbol and the voice language in Octopath Traveler 2. So there's a bunch of options for you to choose from. And I also want to talk about NAMI really quickly and just state that the NAMI Helpline is a free US-based nationwide peer support service providing information 
resource referrals, and support to people living with a mental health condition, their family members and caregivers, mental health providers, and the public. The NAMI Helpline is available Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Time via call, text, and live web chat. To reach the NAMI Helpline, you can call 1-800-950-6264 or visit nami.org slash help to access all NAMI Helpline resources and contact information. Okay, I want to make sure that chat. Oh no, it went away. Darn it! We had a second there where um, we had the glitch where the uh, where Cosmos's gun was by her head. <laughs> but um, because of this causing the characters' models to glitch out in a pose, the um, weapons for each one can show up just in random weird positions around them. Ziggy. Now, this is going to be the last glitch that we do in the game. Excuse you. Sometimes it just doesn't like to have your inputs. Okay, we're good. Good, we're good. Cool. All right. Now, because we... Oh, I almost forgot to turn the button on. Because we got the boost pack, now every single fight... All three characters are going to get access to an additional boost. That means at the beginning of the fight, or at any point during the fight, I have access to um, multiple free rounds. And because of that, um, we're just going to start wailing on things. Because <laughs> now we're suddenly going to have the ability to do all the damage at the beginning. We weren't already OP before, we're like extra OP now. Yeah, I still have to be a little bit careful during Simeon because sometimes Simeon can be just a pain. But um, other than that, and Great Joe, we're we're, we're pretty we're pretty good. Yeah. Especially, I'm I'm so glad I'm so glad that we got that. I was sweating of it because if we didn't get the boost pack, Great Joe would have been so infinitesimal, like so so infinitely harder. Oh, man. But because there is a, is a little bit of a preview, Great Joe has one ability that he uses when he gets below, at or below 2,000 health, that um, hmm, causes him to do this thing where any damage that comes to him um, has a 50% chance of healing him. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That sounds awful. It's pretty awful. Thankfully, with um, boost packs and with proper luck, but mostly the use of boost packs, you can get around that by just killing him before you get before that procs. <laughs> okay. So this is the last tower of the Song of Nephilim. Um, all we're doing is we're trying to get to a color puzzle. If I remember correctly, because I didn't open my notes to check, it's one. Wasn't it one, four, one, four, three? One, it's either one, four, three or one, four, two. I think it's one, four, three. Thankfully, on the last one, it does it automatically when you get to the requisite amount. Yeah, you just um, shoot until it works. Yeah, what we're trying to do is create the Song of Nephilim using tunes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Yeah, it was three. When I was practicing, I didn't have my notes open either, and I did that in reverse and was like, why didn't it work? <laughs> yeah, it's one of those audio puzzles where there's a room to the left that kind of shows you what each color is supposed to sound like, and then you have to shoot the color here in this room to match the sound. Yeah, I feel sorry for anybody who tried to get through that puzzle and had either uh, had a colorblind issues or auditory issues because the puzzle would be almost impossible without just guessing for me when i was younger i was just uh i just didn't get it i, I was apparently yeah. not very bright at that time because <laughs> yeah, you're supposed to listen to the song in the other room and match what you hear to what uh tunes the the various pillows give you as you break yeah um stuff on them 
All right. Time for three bosses in a row. Well, two technically, but one of them has two bosses in the fight. Yeah, it's like a two-phase fight. Two-phase fight, yeah. Against two separate bosses, just comes one after the other. I'm not worried about the second one. I'm more worried about Simeon. Because Simeon hits like a truck. Yeah, Simeon is Albedo's mech. He's going to be driving it. And uh, he's he, he can be pretty rude sometimes, like... Uh, That's around... one way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe underselling it even, but uh, when his HP is roughly around half, I think it's when he gets under 4,200 HP, he just starts to go into this phase where he just starts using uh, this all party hitting laser move much more frequently. And then whenever he gets anyone down to low HP, he just does this mandatory little scene thing where he's just laughing and he's like ha ha so frail ha ha i'm a troll ha, ha. and then he just Shut and then up. he just deletes that character yeah <laughs> and he just deletes them and not only does he waste your time but he just also just uh, he just wrecks things so i just hope he yeah. plays nice that's the hope <laughs> <laughs> but he's all he's also albedo though <laughs> yeah it's true man does not know how to play nice Thankfully, I got some good RNG. I got a Shion and a Cosmos turn immediately. Nice. So the thing about boost is, as long as the character has their little portrait in the bottom right there, you can't boost with them. But now I can because we're on Cosmos. So I can boost with the other two characters. Yeah, it's a really odd way to handle the boost mechanic because they did the same thing in episode two, but in episode three, they're just like, no, who cares? Who cares who's in the turn order? boost anybody <laughs> you can repeat boost the same person that's fine which is one thing nice about that game yeah one thing xenosaga 2 has is a bit of the uh, infamous game in the community yeah for uh many reasons <laughs> oh i got an extra boost on uh cosmos Right, come on, come on, don't give him a turn. Come on, don't give him a turn. <laughs> now nah, he's gonna get a turn. There's no way I'm gonna do enough damage with the uh, X-Buster. Oh. I probably, I think he's actually a little bit resistant to me. I probably could have used the drill attack, but oh well. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Ooh, that was a crit. <laughs> Cosmos got another boost. Nice. Yeah. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Well, bye, Xion. <laughs> well. Well, <laughs> bye, Xion. <laughs> That's pretty good for this fight, not gonna lie. I have I have managed this fight before without giving Simeon a single turn. And there goes Simeon. Rip, uh, Shion's XP. Rip Shion's XP. It's not like she needs it. Because <laughs> we're not going to be using her for, um... Great Joe. Okay. So thankfully the game allows you to heal between the two fights, which is nice. Um, yeah. Because they need it. Granted, generally this fight, um, I feel is a lot safer. So here is the mysterious man called the Blue Testament. If you've played this game, you know the, who this is, and you recognize the voice. It's fine. The game just likes to revive characters who got killed earlier on. <laughs> okay. I also got good RNG on this one, too. So, take note, I'm not boosting. I'm not going to boost until the second phase of the fight, because the second phase of the fight is much more dangerous than the first phase, so I'm going to save all of my boosts for them. Ooh, that was a nice crit. Immediately goes into the second phase. Nice. Excellent. 
Yeah, this whole fight doesn't really have many noteworthy mechanics. It's just one phase, two phase. They, they This fight kind of likes to focus on status effects and stuff like that, but uh, we kind of don't have to care because we just kill him too fast. Yeah. Alright, that's two. Oh, this guy doesn't like being very much. I hate him. It's a shame that but the Axe Buster's this... attack is a movie that we skip because it looks so cool. Yeah. And dead. <laughs> Dunzo. Did not even get a single round on the second phase. And that is the power of the boost pack on any percent. If it was um, glitchless, only one person would get the extra boost. Since it's um, since it's any percent, boosts for everyone. Yeah, and on that category, we would I think we would usually put it on Junior so that we can get him to steal more things from bosses yeah. so we can put them on mechs too. It's like we're so yeah. desperate to make our mechs better that we're going to put the boost on someone who can steal accessories to make our mechs better. It's just, yeah. such a silly category in and all the come, wrong ways. Come, jo come join me over. Come join me over here. It, I, I definitely got to so do it sometime. nice. Because it, is, it looks much yeah. more fun. Any percent is so nice. Okay. So I know that we have um, Cosmos as the leader right now, but we are going to be running around as Junior for a second. Because guess what time it is? It is time to take on a great Joe. Oh and boy. you have to have you have to have Junior as the lead character for it. He also has to be in the party. <laughs> There's an email for Xion. We don't care, because this is any percent. We don't care about emails. Though it is kind of funny. Throughout the game, you get emails that give uh, Cosmos permission to use tech attacks, and that's how they unlock them for her. So other characters get them as they level up. Um, Cosmos gets them at specific moments when she gets permission to use them. My favorite email is the one where you get uh, literally directly emailed by a Tekken character talking to you about Tekken. Yep. You also get emailed <laughs> advertisements for other Namco Bandai games. All right, we're going to the residential area. Gonna save in the casino, then we're gonna see if I can get ourselves a great show and get ourselves a second swimsuit. Wish me luck, because this fight is ooh, pain. <laughs> Watch me, like, take him out immediately or something. <laughs> just completely hive up this fight and just obliterate him. Might happen. Probably not, because he can countermand your boosts. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, some of the bosses and enemies in this game can do something... Um, I'm actually going to... Do I have a biosphere? I can't remember. Either way, I need to heal. Um, he can do something called uh, counter boosting, which is when you attack an enemy, or just because they feel like it, they'll do something called, they'll do a counter boost, which even if you're boosted, their boost um, supersedes your boost. So they'll get a turn before you do. And Great Joe really likes doing that. Uh, don't get stuck in the wall, Junior. Why are you like this? <laughs> door what door? Okay. So we've already been in the room with Great Joe before. I explained it earlier. It's the same room where we got our equipment. Now I'm going to try it first without getting any equipment from the or from the um, uh, shop. That's the word. From the shop here. Um, if I have to, we'll get some equipment to sort of beef up our characters a little bit. This is Great Joe. He's very mean. We don't like him. But he gives us a swimsuit, so... He's just chilling in a closet. He's just chilling in a closet. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm going to focus a little bit here. Let's do it. Because I 1000% do not want to accidentally fat think or any of this. Yeah, I haven't fought this boss in a really long time. So I'm just like, uh, I don't even know what to say about this guy. All I know is that when you hit him, he makes a funny noise. Ready? Yeah. Lunar 
He has 9,999 HP. Ah, oh, see, that's what I was talking about. He counter boosted my boost for chaos. Oh. Thankfully, I think the boost still goes off. Yeah, the boost still goes off. Um, it just makes him have an attack first. He did it again. <laughs> yeah. is fine. Okay, there goes Cosmos. Shutting down. Okay, I see okay, why this fight is very dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> he hits like a truck. <laughs> Ooh, nice crit! Yes, yes, yes! First try! Oh, you got uh, it? Chaos coming through with the clutch. <laughs> he critted for 2,500. Okay? See, our, our, our very nice job. Yeah, this is not going to be another Tiamat. <laughs> oh, oh. Also, you get that guy as an ether attack for a junior, but now we get our final party. Goodbye, Chaos. You have been so helpful. Hello, Shion. You now, no, not that. You now get to have, where is it? There it is. Swimsuit. Swimsuit best suit. Oh. I'm just healing up our characters real quick. Okay. And now we are going to the last dungeon of the game. Pro oh, I'm using the wrong character. Proto Merkaba. Now we're almost done. Almost. But I mean, literally for funsies, um, I started, I did the entire final fight um, blindfolded last night because literally if you have a boost pack and your characters are all overpowered like this, you can do it with your eyes closed easily. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So we are, we are pretty Gucci from here on out. We're pretty good. So we're going to have to run um, all the way back to the Elsa. So if you got any donate a couple donations, now's a good time for them. Okay, sounds great. I want to uh, take this time to remind everybody that with all those fantastic incentives that we've got coming up uh, for the Octopath Traveler 2 run, that's coming up right after this uh, Xenosaga run, we have some awesome prizes that you can uh, qualify for. Uh, for instance, if you donate five dollars uh, minimum, you put yourself in the running for some iron on patches of Heartless and Nobody. We got some Sora and Riku Perlers and some Yuffie and Jesse Perlers. And if you do ten dollar minimum, you uh, can get the Octopath Traveler to Steam Key. And then finally, if you do fifty dollars uh, from now through the end of the marathon, you could qualify to get the big, huggable, wonderful jumbo plush of Sfeel that's been hanging out with the uh, RPG Limit Break uh, people on site over there. So that could be yours with a $50 donation. And then overall, $100 cumulative gets you in the running for the 256 gigabyte Steam Deck as a big grand prize. So lots of really great things there that you can qualify for. Alrighty, so we have now gone to Proto Merkaba, which is, uh, I can't remember how they describe the size of it, but the Song of Nephilim is very big. It's probably uh, a fair few times bigger than the Elsa. The Song of Nephilim docked within this ship, Proto Merkaba. This, uh, this ship is uh, many times larger than the Kukai Foundation. That's how big it is. Thankfully, we don't have to go through the whole thing. Let's see yeah. if I can... I'm not going to get the dodge on this guy. Yeah. It kind of operates as both, like, a sort of science facility and it has a weapon attached to it, too. Which, uh, in the story, Albedo uh, pretty much uncovered this thing, revealed it to uh, be actually used, and then he's trying to uh, 
threaten uh what planet is he threatening it with either way he's uh second milsha yeah he's he's up to no good with that thing so obviously we had to go in there and stop him yeah so during the song of nephilim um section of the game when we technically had momo in the party the entire time i say technically i made the joke about a fake character the entire time the entirety of that dungeon she actually was a kirschwasser in disguise um because uh I think I'm in the wrong spot for that. Yeah. Balls. Um, so because of the fact that Albedo had Momo the entire time we were running around those towers of the Song of Nephilim, he was spending that entire time going through her little synthetic brain with his uh, super magic science powers <laughs> because he was looking for his, those GPS coordinates we were talking about. But while he was rooting around in there, he found some other cool stuff, like this, the coordinates for this place. And he was like, oh, well, let's just bring that out so we can just completely destroy. I meant to do that. There we go. Um, to completely destroy all of my brother's plans, his brother being Junior. This game is very strange with its familial uh, pairings. <laughs> OK, let's see if I can get this dodge. Come here. I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna go right across you. Don't get me, don't get me, don't get me, don't get me. And done. Okay. So all we're doing here is we're raising and lowering various platforms in order to make a path to get across to the next area. While being chased by these funny looking robots that also look like they want to have a hug. Yeah. They actually sort of remind me of the, uh, the, uh, freight mech from Alien. <laughs> In fact, I would not be surprised if they were based on that. I'm not going to get the second one. Yeah, he got me the second time. Oh, whoops. Also, by the way, swimsuits, there's Sheons. Sadly, Cosmos doesn't get any. Feels bad. Feels bad. Let's see if I can... There we go. And dodged. Wait a second, so that guy goes down and dodged. And here's the second platform we need to raise. Oh, no, 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 no yawning. Not allowed to be tired. Oh, well, and I, I failed many times throughout this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> just look at the bunnies they will provide you energy i mean they get to nap the bunnies get to nap look, look at them look at them napping so rude you know just because they're doing that there you go no napping for you no napping for you treats instead <laughs> Wait, are you giving him negative reinforcement or positive reinforcement? I'm confused. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I know what the people want. They want to see bunnies hopping around. I'm giving it to them. All right. So we are we have to go all the way up to the top to uh, level 44. And then we have to go all the way across. Uh, see? Okay, there we go. That's perfect. And then we have to go all the way back down to about the midsection, and then all the way back. It's a lot of up and downs and back and forths for the song of Nephilim. Oh, come on, bro. Hi. Please leave me alone. Thankfully, they have these very, very lovely position canisters. <laughs> canisters are the MVP. So convenient. Mm-hmm. Though it does kind of suck when you hit them in the wrong spot and you have to fight them anyway because you can't get past them because they're in the wrong spot. <laughs> yeah, that can happen. Okay. So I'm going to aggro this guy and immediately run away. Hopefully he chases me all the way to here. Perfect. And that should be enough room for me to get past. Perfect. I'm going to aggro this guy. Do that. The fire canisters cause them to stop in the field. Any canister will um, cause them to stutter, but the fire ones cause them to actually completely stop so you can just run around them. Which is pretty nice. 
Okay. One more. This dodge is a pain. Because I have to wait until he's in this specific area. Come on, friend. There it goes. Because that enemy's hitbox specifically is very deceptive. Dodge. No? Maybe? Okay. So we need to hit this button to open a door to go do another thing, to hit another button to hit open another door. It's classic JRPG dungeon nonsense. So now you have to go all the way back up to the top level, see so if you've got any donations. We got time for a couple. Sounds good. Well, I want to let people know about one of our wonderful partners uh, here at RPG Limit Break, which is the Yeti. RPG Limit Break is proud to once again partner with the Yeti to bring you six awesome t-shirts that are now available. You head over to theyeti.com slash rpglb you could take a look at the designs and pick up the ones that tickle your fancy and know that five dollars from every t-shirt sale will go directly to nami and remember yeti is spelled y-e-t-e-e -E, and that's the yeti.com slash rpglb i've got one um i got the uh, rpg limit break t-shirt because i actually have a plan to um, collect, let's see if I got, no, I don't have a space, space there. That's what I meant by his huge hitbox. Um, I'm collecting t-shirts for every event that I've run in, and I'm eventually going to tear them apart to make a quilt. <laughs> Whoa. That's cool. That is super cool. Are you going to, are you going to hang the quilt or are you going to actually use it? I'm probably going to use it. I mean, <laughs> I'm a, sa I'm a seamstress. I don't like to sew things that I'm not going to end up using. Oh, fair enough. Though it might get hung for like the times when I'm not, you know, using it, like in the dead of summer when it's 110 degrees outside. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing I did to the guy on the other side. I'm gonna pull this guy over to here and I'm gonna loop straight around him. Whoop. All right, hopefully I can get the two bosses on, or the two bosses, the two dodges on these uh, mechs coming up here. But we're going to be going to the first mini boss of Proto Merkaba. Come here, I think he can't go any further than this. No, yes he can, never mind. Okay. This is fine. <laughs> All right. So Cosmos is going to jump down a hole. She's very James Sunderland of her. And by hole, I mean cliff, but, you know, same difference. Straight into a boss fight. Yeah, this boss is one of, uh, I think, only two bosses in the whole game that have more than quad nines of HP. So, like, the uh, late game OP skill Erde Kaiser would not one-shot this boss either. But, uh, yeah, it's just a, it's a big old robot. It has some uh, really cool-looking moves. Uh, one of its gimmicks is that it's resistant to laser attacks. For, uh, it has like a barrier up and the more you hit it with laser attacks the weaker it gets until laser uh, beam attacks always um, pretty much always crit but uh except this is any percent and we don't care Cosmos just yeah. put it for 4k <laughs> she just goes through it anyway like who cares <laughs> so th this boss in this category is ain't really anything to write home about you just kind of just keep using the attacks we've always been using but if it was any other category, you'd have to kind of watch out for what he does and uh, weaken his shield and then and then blast him after that. But in here, no, we just, just, just boom, take him down. Just, easy just take him down. <laughs> it is more, it is, the fights are more difficult if you have, um, and there he is, done. If you don't have the boost power. Also, I got really good RNG where I got a full three um, character spread initially. So. Nice. Some of his attacks do hit pretty hard, but we didn't see like anything. <laughs> I'm a glass cannon. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Hit like a truck, but can't take damage myself. Pretty much. <sighs> no, no yawning. It's fine. <laughs> it's contagious, oh. you know. <laughs> Hush. <laughs> In a bad spot. No, oh, you got me. Okay. It's like 50-50 whether that guy's facing you or not. If he's not facing you, you can get past him just fine. Your orders, Xi'an? Yeah, because um, earlier I took that white ring off of Ziggy and extracted uh, all of the agility points, or extracted the agility ability off of it and put it on all of my characters, that increases your chance of getting this three attack spread at the very beginning, which helps you skip the fights faster, which is pretty nice. Because the higher the agility, the more often your turns come up. But there's only like one or two agility boosting things in the game. Come here. You gotta get the dodge. No, he went too far over. Darn it. If he'd gone a little bit more to the right, I could have dodged him. All battle systems are go. We got time for Thanks. a quick donation. Yeah, we got more than enough. You're good. All right, cool. We've got $20 from Vic Boss that said, had to donate during Xenosaga. Here's hoping Bamco has that HD remaster cooking. <laughs> That'd be nice, especially because um, the poor PAL regions. So Xenosaga, oh, I accidentally ran into him. Um, Xenosaga 2, the infamous black sheep of the franchise. Uh, it's not a bad game. It just has issues. <laughs> And is probably the reason why this series, which was supposed to span six games, only ended up spanning three, because two did not sell very well. But, um... Guess which game of all three? The rather infamous, well-known, pretty great first game? The extremely expensive now and hard to find third game? What? I didn't know I realized it was close enough. Or the black sheep of the second game? Which one do you think the Power Regions got? I, got no one. Mm, I wonder which one the, mm. the, yeah. the second one yeah <laughs> they didn't get the first one and they didn't get the third one and that's even more of a travesty if you know these games well enough let's see if i can get around this guy no i'm not gonna um because of the fact that the second game really bro um the second game takes place literally seconds after the first game so the storyline of the second game makes zero sense without the first game's context. You can get away with it in the third game okay, here we go. Uh, because there is a time skip and they spend time doing flashbacks and catching you up on things. Nope, the second game starts off immediately. You have no idea what's going on if you haven't beaten the first one. Because they also don't explain anything because they assume you've played the first one. And if you're in the PAL regions, you have not played the first one unless you've imported it. Yeah, we, we would like a collection or remaster or something. Just at least fix that problem, man. Come on. No. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I would give up the chance to have a Xenosaga remaster if if it was a choice between a Xenosaga remaster or Pied Piper. Mm. Anybody who knows Xenosaga knows how much of a white whale getting a copy of Pied Piper in the West is. Xenosaga Pied Piper is a mobile-only um rpg done in like a pixel style but why i say mobile but when i say mobile only it's not a smartphone flip phone mobile only it's it's that old of a uh, mobile game mm -hmm. and it has it was never released outside japan um it's as far as i know i think i've only know of one person who says that they got a copy of it no it's never been dumped it's never been preserved and uh, it's still technically available on some specific Japanese phones, but you have to have a Japanese phone connected to a Japanese like phone company that is the correct model that can still download it. Sigh. If you can't tell, I'm very passionate about wanting to get a copy of that game so we can preserve it. Because very soon, yeah. nobody will be able to even, you'll only be able to see it on screenshots online. That's the game that needs the remaster. Yeah. Ideally all of them, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ideally all of them, but if I had to pick one. 
So I guess a quick note about what's going on here. Uh, during this elevator ride down to uh, the final boss fight, we have to do four mandatory regular enemy fights here. They're yep. nothing that special. Just got to take them out one just, by one. Just regular fights. Yep. There's nothing you can do, so I'm just going to spin to win. <laughs> if you have any donations, it's just four regular fights you have to do. So <sighs> time to spin to win. <laughs> Sounds good. I'm a fan of spinning to winning. Uh, so we've got $100 from Tyler with no comment, but thank you so much for your donation. And with that donation, it looks like we are now up to 255 out of $1,500 to reach the blindfolded super boss, which just as a recap for anybody who is coming in, we have already met the incentive to actually fight the super boss at the end of the Octopath Traveler 2 run that's coming up after this one. But Sanjian, we want to try and make them, you know, blindfolded. You know, because that's, you know, who doesn't like a blindfolded super boss fight? You know, so we're going to try and uh, get that and get that met. And in addition, we also have some bid wars that you can uh, go for, which is choosing the boat color. You can also choose the boat symbol. And you can also choose between English versus Japanese to run the game in for the voice language as well. So lots of really great options that you can donate for on the incentive uh, track right now. Yeah, my runner's choice incentive is for Octopath Japanese because I speak Japanese and for funsies. <laughs> this Cosmos is just chilling in the corner. <laughs> okay, so you need to guard. I'm gonna do this. Well, I guess I'm gonna get some exercise after all. I'm having Xion guard just because her attack attacks are moderately less useful. <laughs> How many was that? That was the third one? I wasn't counting. <laughs> Uh, I think this guy is the third one, and like the fourth okay. one is this dude with like two healers, was it? Yeah. More spending to win. <laughs> Something every speedrunner hates is the game just not letting you progress <laughs> until it says you can. It looks like, uh... Cosmos has entered a uh, ballerina mode, you know, instead of like the missile mode or the other ones. Uh, it's the new tech skill in the game. Yeah. Charging. Well, that wasn't very nice. <laughs> Not that we care, we hit like trucks. <laughs> I'm so excited for y'all to hear the Sophie um, Pythos boss music, which is the final, the name of the final boss. It's probably the best song in this game. Yeah, we'll finally get a different combat song <laughs> only at the final boss, and it's very reminiscent of a uh, of another song from Xenogears. Is it? Yeah, I've I never, think it's... I, I own Xenogears, but I've never actually gotten past like the intro areas in it. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's similar to like um, I don't think it's in the actual final fight, but it's like the final scene or something. It's around that that time frame of the of the game. You hear a very similar song. Uh, I got the okay placement. You can theoretically get through this um, area without a single fight, but only if they. Oh, what are you doing? What? Okay. Only if everybody is situated, like all the enemies are situated towards the left, you can just run through. It doesn't happen very often. <laughs> all right, and time for the music to just really jarringly cut out. <laughs> all right, here we go. Right, she doesn't have All right, anything. Time for the final boss fight. Let's go. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. We're going to be starting a fight with our boy Albedo. We finally get to get a good look at him outside of a mech and not just a split second any cutscene skips. <laughs> he's uh, He's got some entertaining dialogue. He's a very, very crazy man. 
with some very great laughs. Yeah, he's pretty great. Let's do it. And he also has that HP draining move that um, an earlier boss had but never got to use. And sure, he'll use it at the very beginning of the fight, give himself more HP when he's already maxed. Yeah, good, good job. Uh, he, he, <laughs> he also has uh, an ability later where he'll buff his speed to try and get more turns in on you. But we're probably just going to take him down before that becomes an issue. And he has another really strong attack that he charges up first, but yeah. Turns he, what turns? Yeah, he, he won't get a chance to use that probably. Uh, he might get one turn. But... He'll probably just... Nope, never mind. <laughs> I was thinking he was just going to blow that turn on buffing his speed, if anything, but I... He, sure. he will, if, if he gets a turn. Nope, nope, because Junior just critted for 3k. <laughs> <Boom>. <laughs> no turns for Albedo. <laughs> Time is going to be on final hit of the final boss. Yeah, pretty much right when the boss dies. Yeah. So this boss has quite a bit of HP. Uh, that robot boss earlier had like 12k or something like that, and this one has about 16k. 16. So, 16, yeah. yeah. So he ain't going to go down fast, but definitely much faster than glitchless with your robots. <laughs> huh? I should have done Xion first there. I won't. <laughs> So this very opening phase, he's rather harmless. He hits you with light attacks, and once you do enough damage to him, he uh, steps back and starts summoning some minions one at a time, and they're relatively harmless as well. And uh, you can, like, in between his minion spawns, you can land the extra hits on him so you don't have to wait for all the minions to get killed first. So I believe that's what will probably happen because he got boosts and stuff. I don't know, if I crit here, you might not get a turn, which can't happen. Okay. Okay, 20, uh, 2870, come on, Cosmos. You'd be proud. Darn it! <laughs> if I'd have oh. it, uh, it would have been a no turns for him. But yeah, because he, he has... didn't, we have to take out one of these guys. We yeah, should not he... take out the other one. He has a few phases but we're just we're probably not even phases what together. phases yeah <laughs> what, <laughs> phases what, are what, phases? what are phases because he can summon another set of minions later that are phases much do you more know dangerous, who i am <laughs> but it's, we're just not even going to see those guys yeah phases do you know who i am <laughs> i am miss scarlet tanager xenosaga extraordinaire and time boom <laughs> gg boom slightly over but G -G. we get the incentive and the incentive adds like Five, ten minutes. Ayo! Success. All right. I am going to. Very, very great job. Um, yeah. So that's not a song. I'm going to skip this one because it's a copyrighted song. Um, so essentially, what's happening here is they are. The big spaceship is going to smash into the planet and probably destroy it because it's so large. So they are breaking it up into, like, I think they say 26,000 pieces to get it all to vaporize. The problem is, they're still inside of it. <sighs> so they now have just, like, I think they said it was, like, three minutes to get completely out of the place. They don't entirely succeed in doing that. They have to do some shenanigans to survive uh, going straight into the planet themselves. But, yeah, that is Xenosaga. Um, the game's fairly cheap, so if anybody wants to join us in running it, you can get it for like 20 bucks. Just don't try getting the third game if you like having money. Yeah, that, that's a bit of a problem. It's about $400 to get a complete copy of it. <laughs> Every time I hear about its price, I swear it goes up even more. <laughs> well, I mean, richer <laughs> video game used market. That's, ten that's how it tends to be. I'm also the world record holder for Kuon, which is the most expensive PS2 game, so I get it. Oh, brutal. Uh, but as just a little bit of a thanks, uh, you can find me, Miss Scarlet Tanager, over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Miss Scarlet Tanager. I stream from uh, 6 to 9 Pacific on weekends, and at the moment, 8 to 10 on weekdays. Most days, but you're going to have to join my Discord to see if I have to cancel for some reason. The bunnies, my couch, Tally and Garrus, they're very adorable, and they have their own dedicated webcam on my live stream, so you should come check it out. Now, got anything to say, Blue Metal? Uh, 
Not a whole lot, just thanks for having me because I, I love Xenosaga, so I'm always happy to see it on any marathons like this. So it's always pretty hype, and I'm always down to either run or commentate because I just love this series so much. So th thank you for having me for sure. It was a lot of fun. It's pretty great. So, yeah. It's a very good cause, and I'm glad to be part of it. And add this to my eventual quilt. Nice. All right, well, thank you all so much to Miss Scarlet Tanger for running Xenosaga and Blue Metal on commentary. What a fantastic run that was. I hope everybody enjoyed it as much as I did. Well, this is it for me. This is my time on the hosting, uh, the hosting desk for RPG Limit Break 2023. My name has been Trojan Dude, and it has been an absolute pleasure and honor to be here we are going to run some ads right now and then afterward we're going to have an interview with the runners of the upcoming octopath uh, traveler 2 uh quadriceps and zero and you will be in the hands of some deaner after these ads thank you all so much and have a great rest of your day What's up, RPG Limit Break 2023? Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Sum Diener, and I'll be your host for a bit, taking over for the spectacular Trojan dude. Xenosaga 1 was really terrific, and coming up next, our next uh, run will be an exciting race of Octopath Traveler 2, any percent, featuring Zero going head-to-head -head against Quadriceps. 
I, I always love watching speedrun races. Really excited, and I hope you are too. We are going to have an interview, uh, which we are still setting up for. In the meantime, I would like to remind you that RPG Limit Break 2023 is coming to you from Salt Lake City, Utah. We are raising money for NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, which was formed in 1979 as a grassroots advocacy organization by a group of parents whose children suffered with serious mental illnesses. And NAMI has maintained that focus to this day. 